What's up, everyone, and welcome back to the Fast Life Podcast. Have you guys checked out the new Speed Bandit from Simpson Motorcycle Helmets? It's a fresh new design that boasts a very affordable $279 price tag. I have had the Speed Bandit for quite some time. It's super lightweight, utilizes the same visor as the Ghost Bandits, and overall, it's sick as hell. Head on over to SimpsonMotorcycleHelmets.com to check out all the models, finishes, and visor options, and also give them a follow on Instagram at Simpson Motorcycle Helmets. John Jessup's Dream Rides is your hub for everything Harley Davidson out of Stockton, California. It's the spot for in house dyno tuning, customizing, parts, service, and bike sales. Also, check out TeamDreamRides.com online store to see the full array of products for your bike and you as a rider. And you can take advantage of the 100 days same as cash financing on all products. All you need is a job and a bank account. Count. <laughs> and while you're at it, give John and the team a follow at DreamRidesJohn on Instagram. Lexan Moto not only can keep your helmet banging with your favorite tunes or podcasts with the FT4 Pro, but now offers their WPC QI wireless charger, which is a water-resistant wireless charger for the Ram Mount X-Grip. This easy to set up system uses a battery tender style plug for easy install and will only set you back $64.95 with a two year unlimited warranty. You can also grab yourself a Lexan WPC and Ram X mount for $110 at Lexan Moto.com. And at checkout, drop the Fast Life offer code to save yourself 15% off. And don't forget to give the team a follow at Lexan Moto on Instagram. Thundermax and their ECM computers are designed to provide your EFI-equipped Harley-Davidson the most advanced auto-tuning available. A Thundermax ECM eliminates the hassles of upgrading your motorcycle's performance by allowing you, the user, the ability to simply download a base map and let the computer do the rest. Also a hot item is their iRide rear suspension, which is a performance air ride rear suspension, giving you the ability to adjust many aspects from the handlebar mounted touchscreen. This rear suspension is the best of both worlds. Check out these products and many more at shoptmax.com and use offer code FASTLIFE at checkout to save yourself 10% off. And give these guys a follow at Thundermax EFI on Instagram. Paint Huffer Metal Flake is your number one source to get dialed in with the latest flakes, pearls, and other custom paint related products. Paint Huffer has grown to become the standard in the custom paint game, and you can get down with these badass products as well at PaintHuffer.com. And you can save yourself some coin by using FastLife20 offer code at checkout. And last but not least, you can get some inspiration by checking out Paint Huffer Metal Flake on Instagram. Welcome back, everyone, to the Fast Life podcast. Uh, have my good buddy Steve Chamberlain on again. Uh, he rode back with me from... Uh, I think he linked up with us about halfway through our trip and uh, rode Colorado, New Mexico, and back here to Texas. And uh, he's on a he's on a path to do some more riding. So a uh, very inspirational dude, great friend of mine, and uh, love seeing him and all his things grow. Uh, on this podcast, we talk about many things and uh, catch up. And, um, yeah, it's a good time. So let's get into it. Steve Chamberlain, let's go. Hey, guys. You ready to let the dogs out? Rolling. We've been rolling. <laughs> We've been rolling. I'm like <laughs> 4,000 miles into this trip rolling so far, and I'm still like 1,100 from home. So that's a good thing. So, how many how many more do you need to hit that 50,000 mark? Uh, I'm at like 48,100. So, if I have like 1,100 miles the fast way home, so I got to add 800 miles on it somehow. I want to hit 50k before I head home. Well, you're talking about going down to see Mark, so that's a 160. Yep. Um, so I mean, total that would be 320. Yep. Something like that. So. Yeah. And if I came straight back up here, thinking I've never rode in Louisiana. I know it's not anything. I don't care if I'd even just hit the corner just to like put, so you a, did put a check mark in that box. Yeah. But you know, I might shoot up maybe towards Louisiana on the way home and shoot over or something. Man, if 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 I was going to do it, I would go to Mark's. And then I would just cut over to like the wheat, like like New Orleans or some shit. Yeah. Because I mean, if you're just trying to knock it off your list, then yeah, you could cut through like a uh, Shreveport and shit. God yeah. damn, it's boring, dude. Yeah, I bet. It's just flat and boring, and 
Well, kind of that, that Royal Tea uh, podcast you did way long ago talking about New Orleans because that's yeah. where he's from, right? Yeah, he's right down in there. Yeah. Sounds kind of sketchy. It is. <laughs> Dude, if you ever watch, I, I haven't seen his Instagram in a long time. I don't know if it's uh, if he's not putting out a lot of content or if I'm just not on his algorithm at the moment. Yeah. But, man, he used to post, like, drug deals going down right outside his window and, like, crazy shit. Oh, the, the shit he posted was hilarious. <laughs> almost like some san diego customs type stuff yeah it's like it it, it really is but it's kind of i the san diego stuff is kind of like funny yeah because it's just like dudes perversions and and like uh you know addictions for sex basically yeah which is kind of like it's kind of like the equivalent of saying you're in a drug rehab for weed right (laughs) (laughs) dude his stickers that he throws in the back of cars the san diego customs the uh I went to the adult depot and all I did was get jacked or something. <laughs> Those <laughs> stickers are hilarious. That's awesome, man. I don't, I, if, if I had that much going on outside of this shop, I would never get anything done. Oh, you absolutely. know what I mean? But the, I don't know. I, I think it's cool that they have all that shit. It makes it makes Instagram entertaining. Oh, absolutely. You know? So, so what was, uh, last time you were on here a couple months ago, you know, optimism out the ass, right? Yeah. That's, and per- then you hit a deer. What happened, man? <laughs> Went through, completely rebuilt my whole bike this winter, you know, motor split in half, and then repainted the whole thing, did some changes in the body work with cutting the bags and whatnot. Uh, Fender changed out the inverted front end to like a standard front end with a cartridge setup. So completely rebuilt bike, brand new, you know, pretty the beginning of the season. I don't know, made it a couple thousand miles. I went down to your um, your camp, camp out. out, you know, so it was a couple thousand. And then we were going out to Laconia Bike Week, which technically got canceled because of all this COVID stuff. But we're like, still got friends out there. Mm-hmm. I made it to the middle of New York, 10 a.m. in the morning. And I think it was on Saturday. And then deer ran out in front of my buddy, stayed in the middle of the road a little bit, and then ran and darted right in front of me. And I smoked him at about 60 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. Ended up having to go to the hospital. I just thought I was going to get some stitches on my left knee. And then ended up breaking my knee and a uh, bunch of stuff. And then the cut that was in my knee ended up going to the bursa sac in your knees. So then if that gets infected, you know, you can lose the rock bottom part of your leg. So it ended oh, up being kind of like an emergency surgery, you know, happened at 10 in the morning. I was having surgery by 10 o'clock that night. So damn. Yeah. What was the, uh, what hit, what did your knee hit? Was it the deer or the ground? That I don't know. Cause it's like. I T-boned the deer at probably 60, so I don't know if the deer wrapped around and hit my left knee. I didn't have crash bars on my bike. I kept the bike up for 60, 80 yards, it felt like, and then the bike just flipped on its left side. You know, my forks were all twisted and everything, and then uh, ended up, so I don't know if it was like when I flipped on the left side of something with my knee, or then they had those like wire guard rails, you know, where and then i ended up sliding to a stop into one of those so it's like one of three things but it was weird because like my pants weren't even cut but then my knee had a big old laceration in it so <coughs> that's weird i wonder yeah that's that's really hard to to chase yeah you know so what I mean? like my left turn signal is broke off the front of my bike so that's why i really wonder you know if the deer just wrapped around and actually you know the deer is what cut it open or mm. but I ended up that's, killing deer, so. <laughs> fuck that deer. Um, <laughs> that, that's what's scary about, like, you know, I think, we, I don't remember what podcast recently we were talking about how, like, you know, friends going down, like FXR Mike with the, uh, he didn't go down on his bike, but the fucking truck flipping right. over. That's scary enough, but. And then Yertle, you know, just Yeah, went Yertle down. went down, and um, then. Um, Marshall, you know, had Marshall. a slow, slow speed accident. And Coit, Aaron Coit went down, hit yeah. an ETB on the car. It's like those ones that you can't predict, man. Like, you know, like there's, I think what we were talking about in the podcast previously was like a lot of wrecks can be avoided based on like your attention to what yeah. you're doing. But then you have those ones that are just like a fucking deer, right. which, you know, I know how they do. They run out and they, they, they deer in headlights basically. Yep. And then you, it's like, it's like shooting an arrow in the sky right. and seeing where it's going to land. Cause you never know if that deer's going to turn around or run forward or. Yeah. Yeah. You know. I, I dipped when I should have dodged, you know, <laughs> just, I tried to go a little bit farther. Right. And, yeah. you know, if I would have went left, I might've missed him, but then I had a bike behind me, you know, so who knows if the deer would have hit them. So, and that yeah. bike had two people on it. So it's one of those shoulda, coulda, woulda's, you know, you think yeah. you do it, but. 
man, it's a it's a scary thing, man. Because like I said, with us doing all these trips, and you know, it, I think it's been weighing heavier on my mind because of all the homies kind of going down and stuff. But like, dude, I mean, you like at least when Euro went down, he was you know ten miles from home. Like yeah. you're fucking a whole time zone away, basically. Yeah, I was five hundred miles from home and basically five hundred miles from destination. But with all the COVID stuff going on, I was rolling with two other buddies or two other bikes, three people. And I was like, there's no sense in you staying around here. I was like, what are you going to text me from outside, you know, the hospital? They won't let you in anyway. So I was yeah. like, go continue your vacation and everything. And then, you know, my family, you know, 500 miles home, my sister ended up coming pick me up, you know, two mm -hmm. days later when they finally released me from the hospital and everything. That's fun riding in a car with a broken knee for 10 hours. It's like getting in my car. <laughs> <with a broken laughs> I'm a big dude. So. Yeah. <laughs> Man, that's uh, we were actually, I think we were on our trip in uh, the Smokies at that time when it happened. Yeah, it's a weird thing, man. Like when when a buddy goes down, like you know, we we talked about this at the I think last year's camp out when yeah. uh, when Blake went down. Yeah, you know, it's just like weird vibe when like you feel like you should be doing something else that you're not. Like when you went down, I feel like, damn, do I go to New York right now? Like right. it's a weird thing that you. Kind of, kind of get in a weird space. Like, like, can I can I still ride because my buddies, you know, went down and everything. Yeah. You know, I kind of still enjoy my day. But I'm, you know, being the person when I went down, I'd be like, fuck yeah, you know, go out there and yeah. still smash. But my I mean, house. it definitely depends on right. the uh, severity of the yeah, exactly. uh, of the situation. But like, you know, like when Blake went down, like I felt bad mm -hmm. being at the camp out still somewhat partying when this dude was, you know, yeah. care flighted, which I don't know what it's called up there. Here it's called care flight. Yeah. Um, all the way up to that. I mean, I think he went to Fayetteville, which was, you know, probably 150, 200 miles away. Yeah. It's just weird, man. Like, like, uh, like I said, man, it's like, you don't really know what the right, or, like when FXR Mike was fucking thing was flipped over. I'm like, do I go get him? Right. You know, like how do you, know, I don't really have a truck to go get him, but right. you like know, how can I help? How can yeah. I change this and everything? Yeah. It, even though I know it's helpful, it's like, I feel like the easiest, uh, uh, the, I know that it's helpful for like the GoFundMe stuff, but it just doesn't feel sincere, right? You know, to do that, it feels like ah, I sent them twenty bucks, yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> like it's your fucking Go or like your your OnlyFans or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I had one of those started for me. So um, I had I figured out that I didn't have medical coverage mm -hmm. when on my motorcycle. Like I thought I did. I um, they had uh, bodily injury. It's called you know, and then Michigan's insurance the bodily injuries like if you were riding on the back of my bike or um i hit somebody on the sidewalk that's what that coverage i just misinterpreted like oh if like i get injured that's what it is and then i had nothing on medical benefits or medical payments so mm. you know everything i did with the hospital and the ambulance ride and everything and all that stuff was all out of my pocket you know because i didn't have personal medical insurance and everything yeah. at the time so that sucks so i got a nice Probably twenty five thousand dollar or thirty thousand dollar bill for Damn. smoking well, a stupid deer, <laughs> and that sucks because it's not even like you did something wrong, right? And if you're doing sixty, that's really un unlikely for you. Yeah, like yeah. You just, <laughs> <laughs> we're rolling down the road. And Must then, have been a cop around there. <laughs> yeah. So then we, uh, you know, yeah, in your Google Maps, your ways, you know, alerted yeah. for a cop, and there's a ton of cops around uh, as it was, and then just got alert for the cop, just dropped it down to the speed limit, and then. Boom, that's right when the deer popped out. And then when the cop showed up later, he's like, I've been watching deer just cross the road all morning. I'm like, yeah. Thanks. And then, yeah. It was like after Shoot him, motherfucker. Yeah, it was like after it happened and everything, you know, riding on the way home, I just seen how many dead deer there were on the side of the road. Yeah. I'm like, holy fuck. Yeah, I heard that's a big problem up there, especially in like upstate New York and all yeah. those uh you know, more rural parts of that country. Yeah. You know, like, like I think they have like Lyme disease up there real bad from like the deer and stuff like that yeah some crazy shit i heard about it on rogan i'm not even gonna try to <laughs> i'm not even gonna try to regurgitate that shit i don't know enough about it i don't hunt but you know i've killed two deer so far this year because <laughs> i hit one on my bike and then you know i started driving my car again four four weeks later then i was just driving it was like 80 degrees out and like 3 p.m like i thought these things slept during the day yeah but this one just came running out in front of me and smoked it in my car hey you remember my buddy <laughs> fuck you <laughs> But when we were rolling into uh, Rio Doso, yeah, there was two on, two on the side of the road. And yeah. We pull up to the stoplight and Kyle looks at me. He's like, dude, they're coming to get you. You killed two of their buddies. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, dude. 
I, I never really pay attention to deer much because here in Dallas, we don't really have a deer problem. Right. Like you go down towards Mark's shop down there in Cedar Park in Austin and further southwest. Yep. And I think even southeast too. Man, it's they're everywhere. You know what I mean? But when we were pulling the Rio Doso, man, like there was just deer. Like there was deer in the parking lot of you know the condo we had. Yeah, in the dude, there there was. Did you see the videos that Big Will Cody had posted? Yeah. Like they were up in the grass, like yeah. on the way, like in between the parking lot and the the condo, just yeah. hanging out. Like that's uh, I mean, it's kind of cool because I mean, if you're like me and I don't ever see deer, so I'm like, oh, cool, a deer. Yeah, you know, is, is that how you say it? <laughs> <laughs> they're cool until they're standing in front of you when yeah. you're going sixty miles an hour at them. But, um, yeah, there's, that, that's, the, that's one of the reasons why we were really trying not to do any night riding on that trip. Yeah. Even though both the times you hit the deer was middle of the day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, I guess we're just trying to eliminate some of that shit. Me and Mark actually rode through the same route that me and you just did. But from the moment we turned off 25 and went across that little straight with, yep. where the storm was coming down, we stayed on 380 and went through like Lincoln and shit, and uh, we were ripping, dude. And we, I think I saw like a fucking not a moose, but like an elk or something, something bigger than a deer. Yeah, you know, a moose are like definitely up in Canada. Yeah, or some moose shit. are moose are huge. Yeah, it was big. It was bigger than a deer, but um, you know, but it was on the side of the road, and we were just hauling ass through there. It's kind of like drinking and driving, right? right? Until you get caught, you pretty much don't think it can happen to you, right? No, because I had plenty of times, you know, just being in Michigan and everything, cruising down, you know, dark road, going 60, 70, 80, and then you fly past one and there was a deer that you almost hit like three foot away. Yeah. It was just like, it's head, like it's head barely hit your headlights, but it was like, I don't know, I always run a tinted shield too at night. So, yeah. you know, it doesn't always help. But Yeah. Whatever. I wonder what it felt like how much that would affect you if you just kind of grazed one. Cause I've grazed one in a car before Yeah, and it didn't do shit to me. Yeah. But obviously, <laughs> but right. the, uh, Depends, yeah, how it hits you, you know, if it's yeah. going to blow your hip out, if you, you know, it just hits your knee, you know, if you just like that and blow your hip out of your back. Yeah. You know, that's a good point. You know, cause there, I bet you, cause I wonder, you know, if I'd had crash bars on my bike, if it would have, you know, even that. like broke my knee then or something like that, you know, I don't know if the body wrapped around and, if that crash bar would have stopped it, who knows? It seems like it didn't. I mean, it clearly did damage to your bike, but pretty much a bent fork leg and cracked fairings. Uh, yeah. So like, you know, saddlebag scratch, the, the front fairing was cracked up, inner fairing cracked. And then the two front fork legs were like twisted, which it surprised me. I pulled, I had a cartridge system in there. I pulled the cartridge kit out and it ended up being yeah. completely straight. I just put on two new fork tubes and about, 15 zip ties and i said i'll fix it this winter so yeah, that's crazy yeah you're telling me about that in sturgis i was like fuck man like because yeah. you're running the 30 mil kit right yeah which is that big bears um yeah that two and a half over next yeah. 30 kit which i thought for sure it was messed up like i was trying to get my bike together for my camp out mm -hmm. so like i ended up buying like a progressive dyna kit that i was like i'll just throw it in there I'll send yeah. this one back. I'll get it repaired, and then you know at least it's so much. Something my yeah. bike can roll. Yeah, because that progressive kit's like three hundred bucks yeah. or some shit. It yeah. was like the cheapest one I could find that had all the parts that I needed, and then I tore it apart, and I was like, "Wow, this didn't even get damaged." And you know, my bars turned all the way to left. My wheel was going straight. You yeah. know, that's how twisted my front end was. That's know? wild. So, you know, I broke the front fender and all that. And, and you were you were running that, yeah. I know what you're talking about. It sucks, man. That's the scary part about it. And then, like, the insurance thing, which, uh, you know, I think I was telling you, like, uh, I met the dude or one of the guys that runs the Law Tigers thing. at, yep. And I talk plenty of shit about Law Tigers and, <laughs> and the Russ Brown and all this stuff because you see them advertising everywhere. But the dude fucking dropped a dime on me, man. He's like, you know, and I think it would be a great podcast. I'm going to actually set this up for everybody. But to talk to this dude about all the loopholes about insurance, uh, being able to cover your bike the correct way, cover your ass the correct way. Like, I'm like, yeah, you know, like that'd be a great informative podcast to kind of understand right. that shit a little bit better. So then when we're clicking boxes on our insurance policies, we're like, we're not fucking ourselves. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause at least with like mine, you know, my, my bike was covered good. So I had like, you know, full coverage on my bike. And then I had $20,000 of additional extras coverage between my paint and my suspension and 
all that stuff in the motors. So like I felt good on the bike, but then when I figured out I didn't have the medical coverage that I thought I had, you know, my heart kind of dropped a little bit. I'm yeah. like, oh shit, like this getting like going to get stupid expensive fast. Yeah, and if you said it was only like 30 grand, that's not bad for two days or two or three days in the hospital. Yeah. So you know, even with surgery, the surgery. And, yeah. You know, I was put under for the surgery, all anesthesia and all that stuff. And I feel like I had a $50,000 deal when I brought, I was doing a, I was standing on the seat. Yep. It's only, it's the only time I've ever wrecked in my life. I was standing on a seat. And back in my I want to be a stunt rider days, like in 06 or some shit. And uh, I was doing it on my buddies. I always fuck up my friends. But this is never <laughs> mine. <laughs> and uh, so I had an old like a 0203 Jixer, which they used to have like a little um, like a choke cable on okay. the handlebar. So like you could run the choke up and it'll fucking just kind of go itself. Yeah. It might not have been a choke. I don't fucking know. But his bike was an 0405 and they didn't have that. So like the only way I could do it, there's two ways. You can either give it a little speed and as the bike's kind of engine breaking down stand on the seat do you're like woohoo yep or you can be ballsy as fuck put it in neutral when you have no stability yep of the bike and i just didn't do that i just did it when it was coming down but when i jumped down onto the seat to catch the pegs my right foot missed the peg and went all the way down and dipped the bike and i didn't have a helmet on oh geez and uh just got me a nice little cherry on the top of my head and um ended up getting staples and shit but yeah because you know before this wreck um, I had a V-Rod, you know, that we've talked about many mm -hmm. times before. And then, yeah, I just laid that thing going down, you know, to work. That just ended up being some road rash. I rode at home and everything, yeah. no broken bones. But, you know, I kind of lucked out on that one. That's a, man, so and you just kind of, like, would always want to hope that, like, if you do have a spill, that you can still get the bike back. Because it's, right. like, so much anxiety in dealing with how am I get the bike home? How am I going to get home? Yeah. Uh, we're in the mid, like when Jaden went down at the fucking camp out and you know, he didn't get hurt or anything, but you know, he's, we're fucking 50 something miles away from the campground. Right. You know, fortunately good old vice scripts come in handy every once right. in a while, but yeah, it's like a bunch of like problems that just get dumped on you real quick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause like with my bike getting, you know, it all wrecked, you couldn't ride it and anything like, cause I was, about to have somebody come pick me up and get the bike and i was like i'll fix it in laconia you know because i had some people out there but then my body ended up being a little bit more broken than i thought it was yeah and then uh the next day my buddy charlie you know somebody else was riding yeah, his bike dude. and then ended up just i think gave it a little bit too much rear brake locked up the rear brake and the bike went end over end so like my accident happened on saturday his bike got totaled that had 1500 miles on the full rebuild that bike was so clean too yeah like full frame painted everything and then uh so that got totaled so then he's like all right you know i'm getting a u-haul so that like it kind of sucks and everything but it worked out because then it was like me getting my bike home it was like two birds with one stone yeah you know he got a u-haul got his in it and then grabbed mine and we just called that whole trip a fucking wash you know big time it was like <laughs> was as excited as we were when we laughed man it was two days into it we're like fuck this man that's gotta i don't know that sucks man like this whole year has just been a fucking shit show right for a lot of people and um it, it's been hard to uh i, I wouldn't say i find happiness because I've, I've enjoyed a lot of it but it's just been like weird right you know what i mean like should i be enjoying this yeah should i be at sturgis right now with all these people not giving a fuck about the virus and this i, I mean like there's just so many things going on and so many different uh like areas that you feel like or at least i feel like sometimes I, like i shouldn't be doing this or yeah. i shouldn't be okay with this but i am you right. know what i mean oh yeah it's just weird how some people like will come at you you know it's oh you're going to sturgis you know like what about the corona? it's like whatever like i've traveled a lot with like this whole coronavirus thing going on and, yeah you know it's hard to just stop life you know what i mean you know over something like that what's really hard and and like i'm saying i'm saying this with no fucking facts whatsoever but since day one we've been partying yeah like even when we couldn't hang out we were doing it on facetime together yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had multiple parties at the shop we've had the camp out you've had your camp out uh we've done me and the other and the guys we've done the tennessee trip We've done Sturgis now. We're still in the yeah, I part know. of Sturgis right now. We're trying to figure out if we're going to all get sick and die. But, you know, like none of none of us have 
for sure got it to where we knew we had it. Right. I'm, I, I'm pretty sure if, if this thing is as serious as had, we've all had to have gotten it by now. Yeah. There's no fucking way. Yeah. But the fact that, you know, probably in the smaller inner circle group of us, at least 50 to 100 people, and not one of us have, have been dire, you know. Yeah. Um, You ever had that test done? Mm -mm. They shove that shit up your nose? No, that's the reason why I never got like STD tests because they stuck that shit all the way up oh, your dick dude, uh, So like when I was in the hospital and everything, this is kind of what blew my mind when I was in the hospital. So they're like, all right, yeah, everybody that comes in has to have you know this test done. And they shove that 10-inch swab you know up your nose to the back of your brain. That hurt worse than the de whole deer accident. Like oh. I was sitting there, like I, had, you know, whatever, and then that put me into tears. You know, just the way, like it, you know, scratches the back of your head. And then I go to the the nurse and I say something to her. I was like, "Hey, uh, yeah, how much does it, or that test sucks, doesn't it?" And she goes, "Oh, I've never had it done." I'm like, "You're working in the hospital. You're making everybody that's in this hospital have this test done, and you've never had it done." Well, like, they, you know, they they need that for you know them to get all their money and grants though yeah so that like basically everybody that comes and tests positive they get a check off of it right. and everybody that goes into a ventilator to get another check and i think if you die you know yeah. i never even got results if i had it or not <laughs> yeah. they, like they literally they never told me they just came up and swabbed it and then i feel like they yeah. should cut us in on those checks right <laughs> you know you're getting 20 grand just because i got sick and i get to come here like man cut me a little two piece yeah you know something <laughs> so, but I don't yeah know. It's, that just that, that was kind of weird to me yeah, it's no. man. I like, uh, dude, I don't know, man. Like this, it, we're coming up on the election. You know what I mean? Right. And things are getting even weirder. Yeah, it's, it's like being at Sturgis for the last two weeks. Like I feel like we, at least I feel like I got a great check out of the world of all Absolutely. the things that was happening. Absolutely, Cause like it, it felt pretty normal to how it was last year. I yeah. know, like the 80th. People say the 75th was wild, and then this year was the 80th, and I heard ton of people were going and then I heard a ton of people that backed out last minute but I gotta say like people wise I don't know maybe felt like last year maybe a little bit less but yeah it was still hopping they said it was like 400,000 this year I don't okay. remember what last year was I don't know but I think 75th was like 700,000 or 800,000 so it might have been double yeah. but man like like I said hanging out every day like you know none of the places we went to required you to wear masks like everything felt normal it wasn't social distancing with tables and shit right. and um you know like none of the precautions that they've been putting on every i mean we can talk about some of the states we've been in since right. then uh, later on but like it just felt normal and it felt great because like you don't really have a lot of great service out there so you're not sitting here on cnn and fucking right. listening to everything going on on facebook so you just feel like you're out partying and riding bikes with your friends and man it felt great but as soon as you start getting into these other states the sturgis isn't going on you're quickly reminded of uh how much of an asshole you are because yeah. you're not wearing a mask while you walk down the sidewalk yeah you know what i mean yeah like in colorado you know the old ladies just every public place you know person needs a mask you know yeah. not even just inside so we're yeah, walking, walking down, around walking down the sidewalk getting yelled at and we're like all right whatever you know i'm yeah. out here to try to piss people off so Dude, it's, it's a it's a crazy thing, man. And, um, you know, with everything, I guess apparently the the protesters ended up showing up to Sturgis. It was just like at the end of Sturgis. Right. Um, but, man, you know, all those fucking hell yeah brothers up there like, yeah, we fucking we smashed them. You know, like, right. OK, dude, like you, you beat up five dudes that came up here to protest <laughs> like Big Whoop. But the um, I, I don't know, man, like this, all this shit. And then. You know what's crazy about it is like you don't know what to fucking believe. Right. You don't know what to believe. You don't know to believe these documents or this post or, you know, because I'm seeing things where it says things that are acceptable and unacceptable and like protesting for Black Lives Matter is okay. Uh, protesting for um, another one that's in line with it, Antifa or some shit. I don't know what the fuck it is. And then like Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter, uh, this, this, like all this fucking list of like things is. Un is unacceptable to protest right you know what i mean it's like yeah a protest isn't supposed to be acceptable or unacceptable it's like that's the people's you know voice right? right so whether you believe in one side or the other being able to protest is part of your right yeah 
No, I, yeah, I just I don't understand half of it. I don't yeah. try to get it in too deep on it, you know, because it just pisses me off at the end of the day. You know, it's just yeah, it's a whole, tough one, man. It's weird. It's gonna be one of those things that we're gonna talk about twenty years from now, thirty years from now, and we're like, we don't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, maybe we would, we'll know by then what was going on, but. I don't know. During these times, I don't know what the hell's going on. Dude, Theo Vaughn had a post that was funny as shit. That uh, <laughs> so I could find it real quick. That it had me rolling. It was like, um, uh, what's this fucking podcast called? This past weekend, I don't know. I don't ever listen to. Oh come on, man! You're yeah. messing up. He it says it's 2040. The president is only available on cameo. Gravity is on trial for excessive use of force. <laughs> Syrup has been branded a hate liquid. <laughs> <laughs> hate liquid. <laughs> Coming out of the closet is an Olympic sport. <laughs> <laughs> that shit oh, is so shit. funny, man. And it's kind of like, yeah, I get it, man. It's probably going that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So what do you? What was the? Uh, were you thinking you weren't going to be able to make Sturgis, or because I know um, you were pushing for your camp out. Yeah, so, like, when the accident happened, it was, like, early June. So then I was having my camp out uh, July 17. When I got out of the hospital, the doctor's like, no, wait for six weeks. You know, so I'm like, all right, I'm in a straight leg brace and everything. So first two weeks, I didn't do a damn thing. I just sat on the couch, like, all right, let this thing heal. Then I'm, like, using a walker, kind of get around. I'm like, all right, I'll throw a little weight on it, you know, mm -hmm. see how it feels. And then, it, you know, still hurt. So I was like, still being easy on it. And then like week three went by, week four, you know, then I'm kind of just starting to walk without a walker, you know, getting around a lot better. And then my bike was still messed up and I was dealing with insurance, you know, so because it's like, because all the COVID shit, like the adjuster wasn't even coming out. Like I had to send pictures, you know, so I had to make it to my buddy's shop, go take pictures because he would send me pictures, but then I didn't have the right time stamp on the pictures because I'd be like a saved one. So then they're getting all weird. So finally I went out there and took all my own pictures. Then they approved, you know, the, or we came to a deal on the whole situation. Then I started fixing my bike and I kind of like, all right, can I get it up off the kickstand with my knee? You know, mm -hmm. and then like, all right, I'll make it to my camp out. I'll see how it is. Cause that's, you know, 200 miles from my house. I was like, if I can ride 200 miles, you know, then we'll judge Sturgis from there. Cause Sturgis was two mm -hmm. weeks later. And then I don't know, felt good and four thousand miles into this trip so far and So yeah. the the camp out this year it looked like you had a shit ton of people. Yeah, it was a fucking great turnout, you know. Yeah. Like I don't know, past two years I did the camp out, we've had some like crazy weather come yeah. in. Like you can't judge that shit. Like a mm -hmm. couple weeks before, hot, sunny, nice. And then it's like, Oh, you're gonna throw a camp out this weekend? Like dump we're it. gonna just dump some rain on you. Yeah. But I bet you Friday night, you know, we had hundred people, hundred bikes plus sitting there, mm -hmm. you know, all over the country, you know, California, somebody came from, uh, Wyoming, you know, big group from Texas, uh, Florida, North Carolina, Virginia, New York, New York city people and Pennsylvania and all nice. that. So it was, it was a good ass turnout. What the, uh, do you get any rain though? I thought that's all one day it rained. No, like we got fucking big storms you know like <laughs> we got fucked <laughs> like yeah. you know but it's like same thing as last year it's like we almost there's like a pavilion at the place so then when it rains it's like the what do you do it's like grab some we beer. had that hell storm come through ours this year yeah. too but it's like grab some beers and start mangling and we all pull our bikes underneath the pavilion at least it was big enough there so then you know you have like your own little personal bike show and yeah you know beer provided everything and well I, I think that it's part of it though like you know, we were talking a little bit on this this trip together. Part of the experience of the campouts is the trip to it, yeah. right? It's not a trailer of your shit to it kind no. of event, you know. And so it's 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 the the struggle of figuring out your route to this spot and dealing with the the weather, right? Dealing with uh, you know COVID, yeah. <laughs> you know, dealing with all these things that makes the trip awesome. And it, it's really tough to say like. So let's say like your camp out, I'm headed up there, but it's fucking pouring in Dallas. Yeah. Right. Am I just going to cancel my plans? Right. Because it's raining for 30 mile radius around my house all day. Or am I just going to push through it, dry off by the next gas stop and, and make it to the camp out and have a time of my life? 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I will say when you like start a trip off in the it rain, it sucks. It sucks. It does. You know, if you like make it halfway through and you get rained on, it's whatever. But like trying to just push yourself out the door when it's, you know, raining, you're like, fuck. If this. the rain's going to pass and I, yeah. I say go or wait for it. But yeah. if it's a. Uh, oh, absolutely. If it's like, like one of those solid day things, but then like 50 miles north of your town, it's dry. It's like, yeah. dude. Wait for a dry, like it seems like it's going to be dry so you can get out of your house. As soon as you get the highway, it's going to dump again on your right. ass. So, so yeah, I don't know. Just sometimes you just got to fucking go out and do it, you know. Like, if you have that perfect trip, you know, you didn't hit any weather, no bikes broke down, you know, everything was perfect. At the end of the day, you're not going to remember, you know. You're going to be like, all right, yeah, that one was fun. But those ones were like shit gets weird yeah, and yeah. you know stuff breaks down and you figure it out and like Jaden gets lost for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so those, those are the kind of things. Like I feel like that's like this trip we just did um, didn't feel like we had any issues bike wise at all. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at like the things that we were joking, we've been joking about has been yeah we lost a guy <laughs> for two days. <laughs> um, what else happened? Uh, our main gripe has just been COVID shit. Right. New Mexico was horrible. Yeah, you had one guy that had a dip out early, and then I just – because you guys left Sturgis, you know, a couple of days before me, mm-hmm. and then I was just going to leave Sturgis. Like, I had a hotel out there, and then uh, – I left Sturgis and I was like, I'm gonna go to Colorado on the way home. And then I looked at Instagram, you know, when I'm riding and you were heading towards Colorado and I'm like, where are you guys going? You're like, Steamboat Springs. I was like, meet you there and yeah. whatever. And then I rode with you for three, four days afterwards. And yeah, I mean, you're still riding with us. Yeah. <laughs> <You're in Dallas. laughs> I mean, yeah, now I'm in Dallas in the old studio. So yeah, um, everything. So I don't know. I just kind of, I wasn't ready for Sturgis to be over. You yeah. know, I had, I had five weeks that I was down and everybody knows that I just love riding motorcycles and shit. Mm -hmm. So now I'm like, you know, I'm just extended this trip, you know, way beyond what I even thought it was when I left my house. But yeah, that's cool though, man. Like, cause it it worked out well because we were kind of stressing. This is the biggest, uh, the biggest group that, that I've ever had to ride with or led for that, for lack of a better term across any state lines, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of, I mean, you kind of caught, we were kind of talking about it in Rio Doso with the guys and, it's really tough. I mean, even though it feels effortlessly, like, yeah. it, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like it, it wasn't a huge burden, right? Right. But losing a guy, you know, that was, you know, kind of nerve wracking at first because, you know, we're, we are all in, in Yellowstone where we have zero service. Right. So we have no way to contact him. He has no way to contact us. So we don't know if this dude flew off a mountain right. or what, you know what I mean? And, and then it, it happened so far. It like, like when you have 12 dudes and you're and you're ripping through corners right yeah. you know you usually get to the next spot where you're actually going to make a turn and then you wait for everybody to catch up and then you go yeah well when the last person shows up and you're like hey where's Jaden at and he's like oh well he was taking pictures back there like well, you know fuck, we're not waiting on that so we just keep going to the next spot and the next thing you know we never see the dude again right. you know yeah, it's always so hard, you know, like you have 12 people and even when you're leading, like, yeah. you know, I lead a lot. Like, it's hard to be like, you know, you turn around, you're like, oh, we good to go. And then you get a thumbs up from somebody midway back in the pack. You know, you're like, all right, we're good. You know, like yeah. I can't see, you know, everybody that's behind me. And next thing you know, you're like, where the fuck's this person? Yeah. Oh, we left him back there. And you're like, well, thanks for the help. Yeah. You know, you being midway or halfway back in the pack, you know, it'd be nice if you can communicate that better. But. Yeah, I felt Nothing's like it's perfect. Yeah, it's not perfect. I mean, like I said, it's for me, like it, it was awesome to see like those different parts because I'd never ridden through Yellowstone, uh, Beartooth Pass, that w- northwestern part of uh, Colorado, basically, yeah. and southwestern part of uh, Wyoming. It's an experience. It's awesome. But I've never really done that before. So, as much as I'm trying to make sure all these guys have a great first trip they've ever right. done like this. I'm still, some of it was still new to me, you know? Yeah. Like when we got stuck on the dirt road, it's like, I, dude, I literally dropped a pin in three spots on that, on the Google Maps to make sure it wasn't a dirt road. And just yeah. so happens that the 30 mile gap that I didn't drop a pin on was the 30 mile gap <laughs> of dirt road. Yeah, we had that in Sturgis. We're like heading back. Uh, I don't know if you know, like around Sturgis pretty good, but I think we're by like the needles. You come up mm-hmm. to Hill City. You know, then you take that 385 back, and I'm like, oh, you know, if you take a left at, like, the little turn at Hill City, I was like, this looks like it goes up to Deadwood. 
apparently it's 25 miles of dirt road in between there. Like we had a storm. <laughs> Is coming. that from last year? Or this year? No, that was this year. Oh shit. And I was like, I rolled up on it. I'm like, I don't care. Like I'll roll down a dirt road, you know, yeah. whatever. But then the next day I seen you guys freaking rolling down a dirt road and I'm like, <laughs> well, it happens. Yep. It, um, yeah, like I said, you, you know, I, I got caught on a dirt road too. Cause we were at the Buffalo chip and as soon as we pulled up to the FXR show, my buddy Jason, the uh, speed metal built, goes, uh, hey, man, you want to shoot John Jessup's bike for this magazine? I'm like, fuck yeah. You know I mean? I, I haven't – I just barely started looking at the photos, so I don't know if they'll actually make the magazine or not. But, you know, it's a great opportunity, especially right. pushing this photography thing. So – but he's – his bike's in Spearfish. We're at the Buffalo Chip. And so, like, I didn't want to go right, right back through downtown uh, Sturgis to get to the highway to go there. Yep. So it had an option to go the back way. Well, the back way was like 15 miles of dirt road. Yeah. With my wife on the back and shit like that. And it was uh, after I just fucking washed the bike too. That's the other thing that sucks about Sturgis, is like our campground. Did you ever? I no, stopped in there stopped once. once. Yeah. So no matter what, you had to drive through this dirt road park to get to our campground. So every time we would leave, we would like wash our bikes down and then. Fuck, I forgot my phone. Right. So you got to drive back down this dirt road to get your phone and your bike's fucked up again. Right. Yeah, that's like I lived in a camper, you know, past couple of years, you know, a little campground and everything. Yeah. Every time I left there, it was just like, I don't know, a thousand foot of like dirt. But have my bike all clean, I'd get to the end of it, I'd be like, it's dirty. dirty. People are like, your bike's always dirty. I'm like, dude, I clean it a lot, but yeah. I'd live on like a little dirt stretch and then it's just <laughs> always looks dirty. Yeah, it's a mess, man. I'm glad that I'm glad that you know Sturgis felt normal because I, I think that you know shit's only going to get weirder from now on. Right. You know what I mean? Like it. You know, because here in, here in Texas we still have a mask mandate, right? Where you have to wear a mask to walk in, and then you can sit down and take it off. But when they when they re put this in place at the uh, beginning of July, it was only supposed to be for thirty days, and now we're going on two months. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. It seems like an easy thing to compromise for everybody to be happy. Yeah. You know, but I'm not really happy about it. You know what I mean? Um, the best thing is like that one restaurant we went into in Colorado, uh, the Starvin' Arvin's. Oh, yeah. And the <laughs> sign said, like, no need to wear a mask. This is America. And I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That place is great. Yeah. They were on point, man. Yeah. The hotel we stayed at next door was kind of sketchy, but whatever. Dude, we, dude, that was a good night, though. Yeah. I love those night, those nights like that where you just pull into a town, get to a hotel or campsite, whatever you're doing, um, and just fucking you know like all the guys would hate on me because I'm like, hey dude, let's go to Chili's. Right, dude, we're in this town. Let's go find out what they got. I'm like, dude, we're in a small town. Right, you know what they don't have a lot of? It's Chili's. That's where it's <laughs> popping. <laughs> so it was popping. We had a good yeah. time. Yeah, FYI, in uh, Colorado, they can't sell beer after 10, apparently. Yeah, dude, so, that was horrible, man. Yeah, we were like in Chili's, just, you know, having a good time and everything. Then they're Chili's like, oh, closes yeah. at 10. Then we're closing at 10, and then we're like, all right, you know, we'll go get some beer and drink at the hotel on the way back. And then, nope, nobody would sell beer past 10. Yeah. Because that's like. Fortunately, Jacob had like a bottle of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> so we, you know, I think we had some sodas, and we just made it work. And yep. hung out on the balcony of the, of the <laughs> fucking motel for the next couple hours no but yeah that's the weirdest thing about all this covid stuff is just like you know the stuff that we kind of took for granted you know and everything yeah. and just making it easy it's like you know you're trying traveling through some of this stuff it's like all right trying to figure out their ways and like i did a north carolina trip with a bunch of buddies and everything how was and, that oh that was amazing like went and rode uh tail of the dragon uh -huh. or dragon's tail or whatever they call it and then um we just found this like one little restaurant but they had takeout food only so like you couldn't really eat inside but then we'd be eating on the, the deck but they'd serve us but everything came in like takeout containers yeah and then you know we could have you know margaritas with it and everything so that was like my first time i sat in a restaurant like once covid started this was like memorial weekend first time like sitting at a restaurant actually like getting served because yeah, yeah. you know michigan was pretty shut down with everything yeah we were so. shut down here for for a while too so it was just kind of cool like you know traveling these places and just figuring out whatever their rules are and making the best of it you know especially with your with some buddies you know you go shut down a bar till 2 a.m or you're like well they shut down at 10 so you know, shut it down at 10 you though. know now let's just go party it up at wherever we're staying you know you know the other weird thing about it all is how like uh where where's all the environmentalists that care about like the amount of like waste that we're making now right 
like because nobody wants to wash anything right like it, it's it's kind of like crazy to me like oh yeah like all the styrofoam boxes you know like all these places you're going to throw away forks knives yeah it was you even know. like in new mexico like everything was to go that we went to that what fud ruckers or yeah. whatever so then it's just like trash bins full of like the to-go orders you know yeah. it's like could just open this up and we can eat off a plate and you can wash it and in new mexico was the weirdest one because every restaurant had a fucking circus tent outside of it yeah and they just moved the restaurant outside and it's like what fuck this doesn't solve right. how does this solve anything yeah like they all couldn't serve inside so then they could serve on the patio so all of them just had really expanded fucking patios it makes it's just it, I feel like Clint Eastwood in some movie. You know what I mean? Like, just <laughs> what the fuck, man? Right. Like, and, and, and dude, I couldn't imagine. Like, my grandfather, you know, rest his soul. Like, I don't think he could have handled this shit that's been going on this last year. Just seeing how strange things are. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so fucking weird, man. Right. And it's you know what's even weirder now is this feels normal. Yeah. Like, you're walking into a gas station, and you're like, fuck, I forgot my mask. Turn back yeah. around and go grab it. And you're like, I don't even know why the hell I'm putting this thing on, but I'm yeah, just dude, doing it because, you know. Me and my wife went to eat last night, and uh, it's my first time back here in, like, home, and went to go eat. And we were going to Texas Roadhouse, and, you know, like, Texas Roadhouse here is always packed. So we called ahead, tried to get a table, and we did. And then just showing up and just seeing everybody with masks, and, and now everybody's getting trendy with their masks because they – you know, they, I guess they just right. assume it's always going to be this way. And that's the scary part is like, I don't want this world to be that way. Right. Where we all have to walk around with masks on because of this invisible bug. Right. You know what I mean? And, uh, fuck man, it's, it's a, it's a tough one. <laughs> right. But yeah, definitely doing all the traveling that yeah. I've done with this COVID shit that's going on is definitely like open your eyes to it. You know, yep. just how weird shit is. Yeah. The, um, I don't know other than that though like it it's uh that's what's been weird about like trying to produce podcasts and and i was i'd ask you this too after but like trying to produce this content and carry a narrative conversation you know because it feels like so much of the world has been put on pause even though we're right. still riding and doing things but you know there's no motorcycle news taking place you right. know harley didn't release new bikes they're not coming out till next year i don't even think harley showed up to sturgis no they did they had yeah, those, crazy those, story, but they, you know, our, our they, last... They parked a couple trailers around there. Did yeah. you see that where they had, like, some trailers as, like, advertisement, like semi-trailers? I don't know. There was, like, one I off. want to talk shit very bad, but yeah. I have a good friend now who works there, and it's yeah. not because I want anything from him. I just don't... Because we're associated now, I don't yeah. want to hurt his reputation yeah. there, but, yeah, that shit's gay as but, AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, freaking, uh, you know just kind of weird like there's a bunch of companies that just decided not to go this year and you know, yeah. would normally be there and you know so it's like we're going through all these times you know with all this stuff changing but then it's like yeah like you're saying everything's put on pause and you know like what's new and whatnot so yeah so like how do you you know as a content producer now like like how do you keep like the the story interesting or the you know like I've already been doing this podcast for X amount of years now. So every once in a while I get to talk to somebody new for the first time. So you get to let them just tell their story. Right. Yeah. But you know, people have already heard, you know, the Steve Chamberlain story on another podcast. So I don't get to do that now. Yeah. Now that you're on, we have to talk about what's been going on since May to now. Right. You know, yeah. and there's not, it kind of starts killing off the, uh, the topics of conversation when, so many things are not taking place right you know that's the thing with like you know because i've been running that youtube channel like i really started up i think my first like good video was when we did that podcast here in january yeah. and then i kind of came down here i was still like a little camera shy as far as talking to a camera so like i just kind of got you would shot. sneak it a couple i got times. shots like around yeah. you know and whatever but now i'm getting like a lot more with being able to talk in front of a camera and whatnot but then it's like i go and do this and trying to be in a content you know producer on youtube and shit but then it's like weird with traveling like am i gonna get crap from people for you know traveling around the country during this COVID stuff like yeah you know like oh you're on a road trip like you know you're selfish or something like that and it, it yeah. sucks that it's coming down to this and that's what's scary that's why i'm not you know i was putting all my eggs in this youtube basket earlier this year and now i don't want to have anything to do with youtube right. you know what i mean it's not not that I, don't, I dude, I'm a premium subscriber to YouTube. I, I 
That sounds like I'm listening to porn, <laughs> right? No, it's like I, I pay for the ad-free stuff, so I watch YouTube all day long, and I love the content on there, but I don't like the censorship. Right. You know what I mean? And if we were talking about that because you were saying, like, for your videos, like, you, the cussing has to be pretty much out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think. I don't know. I just – I try to keep it family-friendly. Like, I have, yeah. I have a ton of people who are like, hey, yeah, me and my kids come and watch this, you know, on Sunday mornings and catch up with your YouTube. So, like, I try to keep it, like, interesting, a little bit of traveling, a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of funny, mm-hmm. you know. Like, it's kind of weird. So, it's like just to keep the cussing down just almost just keeps it easier, yeah. you know. So, you know, get a little bit broader of an audience, you know. Yeah, that's – you know, I, you, as funny as it is, like I have to chill out on my shit. Dude. <laughs> so I was listening, I was re-listening to that podcast all day today that, that we did. And I had to pull down and, you know, I had to cut out a couple things in there for, you know, to please the, the world. But man, how much fucking fuck comes out of my mouth? <laughs> right? It's crazy, dude. Oh, it, it blows my mind. You know, even with me, like for what I'm doing, like I'm going through the editing. I'm like, I didn't just got to make sure I didn't sneak in like a fuck and, uh, you know, cause yeah. that's like my, my comfort word. Yeah. I was going to say like, I, I, I traded um for fuck. Yep. Yeah. And it's a, it's, it's, it's funny. Like when you're talking normal, that's what I love about this podcast and, and many other ones like it is it, it is just us talking. Right. right? So I'm not trying to be a speaker. Yeah. You know, I, I'm trying to kind of cut out those things. It makes me sound super stupid like super stupid (laughs) (laughs) but at the same time like you don't like i don't want it to be so cut and dry and fucking you know there you go fuck there you go (laughs) right it just (laughs) comes out but it was pretty rad being in sturgis and then i had uh I had like a couple people walk up to me and be like oh dude i watch your youtube channel like you know that and it's just i don't know being recognized like out there like i was like that's pretty cool you know man that's a that's a crazy it's a crazy currency right that that like uh and what it is, it's not so much that you need your ego filled. It's more that, like, it just makes you feel like what you're doing is, is working. Right. You know, no, it's, it's, but then it's like I, I see the people because, like, they're on their bikes and they have road glides. And I'm like, you know, because I really push, like, the touring chassis, uh-huh. you know, on my YouTube channel. Because it's like, you know, unless you're installing, like, a get back whip or, you know, some 12 or 14 inch handlebars, there's not a ton of, like, performance bagger stuff out there yeah. on YouTube. You know, so like my full bike rebuild, I put it on my YouTube, you know, step for step, especially when I figured out I had to pull the crank out of my M8, you know, yeah. that was like less than two years old, you know, and when my clutch was all blown up and all that stuff, like I put it on there and like I try to be like, I'm not an MMI mechanic by any means or anything like that, but I'm not a stupid person. So like I'll put in that the stuff. right. <laughs> stupid person. <laughs> stupid person. But, like, I'll put, like, you know, tips and tricks that, like, I've learned, you know, yeah. throughout working on my bike. You know, it might not be, like, the way the service manual says because I don't even own the service manual for my bike, you know. I'm going to cut that out so Mark don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Torques just for head bolts. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Charlie Rock has that, that – that, is that his last name, Rock? Yeah. Okay. I don't want to just – That's kind of a fucking badass name, isn't yeah. it? Charlie Rock. Like, he's got that name where you definitely have to say his last name when you yeah. say his name. You know, yeah. So uh, your name's kind of like that because there's so many Steves. It's like I've, Steve Chamberlain. I've always been like a person where it's like I'm a first and last name. Like I go to meet somebody, I'm like Steve Chamberlain. You know, because you just say Steve, you forget it. You know, but yeah, I've like always just embraced my last name as far as doing everything. And then it's like my Instagram names have Chamberlain in it. Yeah, that all you know the first initial, your last name, and then the the number was my address back in the day. Like then, <laughs> like that's how you came up with your stuff. Like. So that's what that's what the the five one five zero used to be my like the four numbers to my address. <laughs> it's not even like the the crazy, you know. Like I think five one five zero means you're like mentally insane or oh, something. Oh, for real? Yeah, like they have a country song. It's like five one five zero. Somebody call the popo. That's a country song. Yeah, I think so. It sounds like a rap song. <laughs> it's rhyming too much. No, the uh, that makes sense because it used to be that fifty one fifty. Yeah, or, or is that different? I don't know. Maybe. Wait, fifty one fifty is five one five zero. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See how I'm stupid we are. <laughs> Shit. Cue the music. <laughs> yeah. But no, there used to be a paint shop called. Uh, um, fuck, I don't even remember now. Something fifty one fifty. Yeah. Area fifty one fifty paint or some shit. I don't know. But yeah, I, I I do see that that number now that you mention it right. a lot. On and things. That, that's just the way it worked out. You know? Yeah. So. That's kind of that's cool, man. Because like it it's like 
like anything, you want to have this long, drawn out like story behind it, but it's kind of like a tattoo. Like I didn't get this tattoo to tell you the story all the time, bro. Like name's S or his name's Steve. So you got the S, the Chamberlain, the five one five zero. But then it's like I've kept everything the same all the way through. Like I've never deviated off that. So then yeah. it's like you know my email's been the same for like ten years. So if like I got to go back ten years in my email that I don't yeah. have anything deleted, I'm like, oh yeah, this came in at this date because I've never or like. When people switch their names around on Instagram and stuff, yeah. you know, then you're like, who the fuck's this guy? Like exactly. and that, and it's just like a new name and you're like, oh, all right. Like I wish Instagram would like send a notification if somebody switched their name, yeah. you know? I know, I, I, cause sometimes I'll be like scrolling down and I see a page like, who the fuck is this? And like in the messages on Instagram now where it like yeah. says whatever name people that's, type that in. That screwed me up, so like it I- It still had, screws me up. I don't fucking know who it is. I gotta click on their profile just to see like, oh shit, all right, I know that person, but I don't know their first name. Yeah, so the thing is like, I have, I, this is what we were talking about at lunch, how I need to reorganize things here. You know what I mean? Because I've been relying on Instagram because they got to a point where you can just like flag messages on yep. and then it'll put them in another folder. So like all my helmet conversations and customers, but something happened and now they're not there. And now everybody's name is their name on there not their, their screen name. And not that I knew their screen name, but if I see a screen name, you're like, it, yep, I know this person. It, like triggers those thoughts or those memories of like that conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, this guy's getting a helmet so I can find out that the information, right? Yep. But man, the um the scary thing, man, like is is uh what if Instagram goes away? Right. Like I mean, good thing it's not TikTok, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what they said. I don't something. know what's gonna happen. That. I heard that it was a big deal that they were gonna uh get rid of it because of the Chinese owned company basically. But um I don't know, it's crazy. It's a crazy world. Right. But anyway, more bike talk. <laughs> so of all the things that you've done to your bike this year, what do you think has probably been the the most eye-opening or the things you're you're most happy with you know what i mean like what do you think really made it better um well with the changes i ended up you know i had the inverted front end on it mm -hmm. then i went to the next 30 cartridge kit but you know i kind of said something in this our january podcast so i changed out the trees on trees, the thing yeah. so instead of the factory like four degree ish trees i run a six degree tree off like a big wheel bagger. It's for like a 23 inch wheel, big wheel bagger. Mm -hmm. So that changes the trail down to like, you know, with my tire size and the height and everything, my trail's like five and a half inches instead of, you know, factory bagger being 6.9. So like I go to throw the thing into a corner and it's like effortless. Like it's not like you're sitting there and like forcing it in the corner all the way through. And as soon as you like let off input or lean, like it just completely straightens up and that it's like yeah. it leans down and just wants to turn so between that and then I did that Justin swing arm and then that gave me some different rear shock locations right, yeah. and I can bring it up higher. Cause like you'll run on like a twin cam 09 and up over a 13 and a half inch rear shock, your swing arm will run in the oil pan. And then on an M8, I think it's designed just a little bit different. You can get up to like a 14 and a quarter before you mm -hmm. run in the oil I pan. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah. So this with Justin's swing arm, I can, I can run like a fucking eighteen inch rear shock. Just the way he, you know, designed it doesn't get bigger beyond it. So I relocated my shocks. I'm still running a fourteen and a quarter, and I changed the geometry to a little bit, a little bit more vertical, and uh, it equals out to about a sixteen inch rear shock. But it, it feels really good. Like yeah. I've, I've thrown that bike really hard into corners and never skips a beat. You know rolling down the highway 120 loaded down never skips a beat so yeah just definitely just my suspension changes that i put in a lot of thought before i did it because you know everybody's like why would you get rid of the inverted i was like i just want to try some new things you yeah know? brain's always you know going around and it definitely worked so so but, basically yeah. you kind of proved it like uh at least in your book that the uh the cartridge setup is well worth the, the money versus yeah. You know, because a lot of people are going to like probably weigh out the options. Like, well, this isn't, I mean, basically you have the inverted front end without the structure of the yeah. inverted front end. Yeah. So, like, you'll, you can feel like a little bit of fork flex, you know, with not having the inverted front end. I feel like the inverted would be a lot better as far as, you know, stability up front, you know. Um, another thing is unsprung weight, you know, with inverted, you just have like the lower 
part is a lot smaller. And then with uh, the standard front end, you have that big lower tube, you know, unsprung weight, you know, change all your suspension valving and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so that seems good. But as far as the way the cartridge setup works, like, I don't know, I really dig on it, you know? Yeah. So it's like no real complaints here. Yeah, it seems like a good um, a good balance because, like I said, my for my riding ability, my suspension is way more than I'm capable of. But, you know, like the changes I made to my bike before this Sturgis trip, you know, and we've been talking about it since since we linked up, but I've been chasing a wobble. It yeah. could be a, a number of things, um, which – it worn out parts and – Or, that, or, or the 21. parts that don't clash together. Or, yeah. Yeah. So that's what's weird because we were talking about it at lunch, man. It's like, you know – could it be the fact that I put a 21 from a 19? I felt like that would only, I mean, obviously it's making the bike taller, right? right? You're two inches higher. higher but it's also changing the trail. You the know? trail. Yeah. So I, I just, man, like I'm getting, you know, like I said, I get a wobble. It, it Depending on the type of air, which I know this is all sounds weird to people, but if the air is like thin, like like more thinner air, like I don't know how to describe it, but just warmer air, I feel like I can – you know smash at 110 no issues but when it's like a cooler dense air yeah it, it starts to want to kind of shimmy right at like 100 105 I which i really wonder maybe even just with the tour pack being on the back you're just getting like a yeah. weird wind that's around you there's so much there's so many things i've added so it's really hard to like i i would like for it not to be the front rim a because i like the way the 21 looks but b because you know i'd rather not have to go back to a 19 to get a more stable bike and i I'm, I dude. I used to run my fucking twenty six, but of course the rake and trail was correct yep. for what the wheel was. So maybe it's like uh, uh, adding some type of like different tree to the bike mm -hmm. that, that would make it more raked out. I don't know. It's yeah. kind of a. I like the tucked look. I don't. I don't like my wheel out there. You know right. what I mean? Like that was like you know with mine. It's like you don't really notice that I raked it out until like I kind of tell you. Then you yeah. can be like, all right, all you know, right. it's a little bit out there. You know the height of my bike definitely, you know, kind of makes the wheel look a bit, a little bit farther out there. Yeah. But I don't know. It just it fucking worked. Yeah. Like, rides damn good. I don't know. Yeah, I got to figure this out, man, because it's not, it's not a product. It's not a person. Like, it's not a bad product. Right. It's just maybe a bad combination of products, right. like you said. So I got to figure out if it is, you know, worn out parts like swing arm bushings or you know we talked about the neck bearings. Maybe how many how many miles are on your bike? 36 or 37 now. yeah so you know maybe yeah just the neck bearings are getting a little you know notchy in them you know yeah. so then it's like you get like a little bit of back feed and then it's like throwing your bars around a little bit but yeah. then it equates out to your back wobbling around it's like you're not noticing it but it's like you know it's like a, having a well-oiled machine that's yeah, not oil yeah. you know so i was okay with all the because we did bear tooth pat we did all this whole trip on it because it started i felt the wobble uh when i left here uh to go to sturgis I was like, eh, you know, I'm going to be leading a big group. It's not a big deal. I'm not going to be smashing hard. And then you show up. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, that, that that first morning fucking. Uh, we went up that mountain, dude. Yeah, yeah. you're getting it. I got I, I to gotta go through that YouTube footage yet. So. so going up, you know, I've always told people, like, I love going uphill versus going downhill. But going uphill, the bike felt way more stable. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know if that might, you know, save. That, that's really leading me to think, you know, swing arm bushings, you know, just because, like, you're having a load on it that's pulling rearward, yeah. rearward uh, if you're doing, like, a decel braking, yeah. you know. So then I'm wondering, you know, if it's shaking your rear tire around and kind of shaking the body with it. So Yeah, so, like, going up the hill, I felt like it was more planted. And yeah. um, the other thing that's throwing me off, and, I, and this might be because of the wheel, I can't judge my dip my, or my, my turn-ins, okay. right? So, like... I'm trying to find the best way to describe this, but say you're, you're coming up on your corner and you want to come into it. Like I used to know how to dip in at the right amount and it would carry through. And now it dips in and it goes too far and I have to dip. You know, it's almost like you're, you're premature dipping. Have a, have a bike that's like two and a half over up front. And then like, you know, 15 to 16 inch rear shocks. It's like mine dipping it in. Now I'm like, it really wants to corner and it can do it when it needs to. But sometimes you're just doing those slight ones and you're yeah. like too much, too, too much. much. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And like, you know, and then the, like when the bike leans over, you're like, I'm totally over the yellow line. Like exactly. if somebody comes around this corner, like my helmet is going to take out their mirror. Exactly. So and it's that's, like, that's the hard part about it is, um, is, um, not that I was a perfect rider before I put the wheels and all that stuff on there, but 
just trying to figure like trying to relearn the bike you know what i mean because yeah. like like i said like you're coming in the corner and you start to lean like even softly but the bike will dip further yeah and i feel like that might be the thing with the taller wheel like the heavier front wheel yeah so it's like it falls in and you have a little bit more unsprung weight like you said to carry it into it yeah. and that's i'm having a hard time judging that part versus right. um like i said going uphill no bit no big deal but like random corners we would hit hit you know like i would I felt like I had a I misjudged every turn from the moment you got on the fucking <laughs> ride with us till we got home. Oh yeah, before I'm there. You're yeah, I was, I was smashing before, and then you just kind of made this pressure. <laughs> Couldn't uh, take it after that. No, but yeah, for sure. Just you know, so many changes and everything. You know, just learning your bike again. You know, after yeah. it was like even mine after this winter, like dipping into corners and everything feels different and you know that. But yeah, you, you're used to it. Yeah, I'm hoping. And hopefully, so. it's not a mechanical issue. That's kind of, you know, or something that you can figure out. But. It's kind of weird. It's like, you know, you said I'll get used to it, and that's kind of the thing I was thinking too. Is like, well, when I get home, I see, I see how it feels when it gets home. Even right. though I just did 4,400 miles right. on this bike while I was doing this, and you would think that you'd get used to it on that many miles, but yeah, getting home and taking the tour pack off, uh, not being loaded in every bag on the bike. You know, I want to see how it rides and see how it feels, and then start knocking off the checklist right and seeing where i need to take it so i don't know yeah that was like i was in the badlands and then they're like oh yeah you know i ripped like a couple like little <laughs> saw baby, that fucking wheel <laughs> baby wheelies but between like my bag on my back seat and then i had like all my tenning gear hanging off the back and then in each saddle bag it full of tools and shit i go to rip up a wheelie and that thing was so sketchy you know got it on video it's just like left right left right yeah. like it wasn't even a good one but <laughs> and i was like oh this feels so weird with all this like weight hanging <laughs> off the back that's like shifting around and yeah, that wheelie looks sketchy as fuck. I think uh, it was either like Jeremy or or Steve or Ben, yeah. one of those dudes from the uh, the G degenerate team or whatever the, the fuck. Degenerate you know? tour. Yeah, they got to be a crew now. Degenerate crew. <laughs> we all got to get. That's what we've been talking about this whole bike trip. Is like, you know, the thrashing dudes have the two two lane life. They the thrashing guys like they have this little road tripping kind of crew vibe going on, and then. Jeremy and them are starting their their little crew of, of like smashing miles and going places and like we're all sitting here coming up with stupid ass names for our shit. The weasels. The weasels. <laughs> the pythons. <laughs> weasels for the win. We're still on the fence with that one. No, fuck it. It's, it's weasels. <laughs> big 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 weasel Cody. You know <laughs> yeah, big weasel Cody. <laughs> Oh man! I don't care if it's just me, Cody, and Larry. We can be the weasels, dude. This is what happens when you get in a hot tub with five or <laughs> how many? Seven dudes. <laughs> oh, drinking shit. fucking Michelob Ultras. Oh, we had a lot of fucking Red Bull vodkas before that. And then that's dude. when we came up with weasels. Yeah, that was funny because we were we were calling ourselves the Pythons first, yeah. right? And then I think somebody was like, "Oh, there's a bike club called the Pythons." I'm like, "Fuck." I don't think there's a bike club called the Weasels. I feel like there should be, though. It seems like a fucking Weasley kind of name, you know what I mean? But the good thing is there's, like, Weasels on, like, uh, the Instagram stories, like the little GIFs, yeah. GIFs, whatever you want to call it. So, like, today's a Big Will Cody's birthday. Happy birthday, sir. So, uh, I fucking said, just for shits and giggles, let me see if there's a Weasel on there. And sure enough, there's a fucking Weasel. So, fucking oh, awesome. That's great. But, yeah, that's a... Uh, those conversations, man, like everything, dude, because like when you're on these trips, man, you're just sitting there shooting the shit, talking about this and that. Some conversations last eight nights in a row. Some of right. them last one night. It's just fun, man. Oh, you definitely just got to go out and just do one of those figure it the fuck out trips. Yeah. Like you guys kind of had a plan, but like you guys could deviate from your plan because what in Colorado, you ran into a bunch of the wildfires yeah. going around. A couple of people reached out on Instagram because they had heard us talking about going through Glenwood Springs again. Yep. and apparently that thing was all on fire and to the point where it's shut down to like november damn yeah so um and then we were at some spot like i don't remember where we were at it was either at a, at a breakfast spot or a gas station or something but there was a tv on and it was showing like it had like fires it had a map of the united states and had all these little fires everywhere and apparently there's some everywhere because there was one in new mexico too oh geez there's a couple of different spots in uh in um colorado was on fire and man it was just it kind of deviated us but um the way that like james and like kind of our crew kind of sets up these trips it's it's 
a couple set in stone places and then yeah. a whole bunch of freestyling. Yeah. You know, because you never know when shit's going to happen. You yeah. Know, you kind of like, you know, it was me as like, I, people are like, what are you doing for Sturgis? I was like, I kind of want to leave this day. Yeah. I was like, you know, clockworks has that pre party, you know, I was like hoping to make it there. So like did 900 miles the first day, made it to clockworks, you know, hung out and everything met up with like lucky strike and Pola and all them. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, like met up with them guys again and, you know, rode the rest of the way to Sturgis. But then we're like, all right, we'll hit the badlands on the way in. And I was like, I kind of had a couple nights to stay in Sturgis. Then on the way home, I'm like, I ain't really got any plans. I'll just yeah. figure it out as we go. When you're you alone, know? like it's just one of you though, one or two of you guys, and oh, you can kind of, so easy. it's so much easier because like when we went last year, we could literally, you know, no one's going to bat an eye about two guys crashing at your pad or something like right. that, but showing up with seven dudes on right. bikes, yeah. big motherfuckers and shit. Like, yep. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So yeah, you have like one or two of you. It's like, all right, you yeah, know, no big deal. You know. We'll put you up. Yep. But yeah, the, um, and then hopefully be able to return the favor later yeah, on, you know? Yeah, that, so, like, when we do our trip, like, you want to, like, book the big things. Like, if you want to camp in Yellowstone, you can't just pull up and camp in Yellowstone, right? right? If you want to camp at Big Sur or at Monument Valley, these these kind of more trendy places that everybody wants to camp at, you're, you can't just pull up and do it. You have to plan that. So those kind of things become the set-in-stone spots. And then the rest of it, like, you know, from Sturgis to Yellowstone, we stopped in Red Lodge, which – we were actually at a point where we didn't think we were going to get a place to stay there because everything was booked out. And uh, we ended up finding two rooms or some shit like that and ended up booking them. But apparently they do a rally there a week or two before Sturgis. So everybody's like, oh, y'all still here from the rally? I was like, which one? And it's like Sturgis. Right. No, yeah. Like how sick was Beartooth Pass? Dude, I dug it. It was yeah. uh, for me and my little bitch-ass height issues. <laughs> um I dug it. Like, I really liked the, even like the climb up was nice. I was kind of hoping that like, once you got to the top that you had like more of an Eastern slope view. Yeah. But you're kind of just riding on top of the mountain, kind of yeah. like Talamina at that point. You, um, like you're so high up, you know, you think yeah. you were going to be more of like a cliff top view. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you look out and you're like, oh yeah, I'm not that high. But then you're like, no, like there's snow up here. I'm at like 10,500, yeah. 11,000 feet, you know? Once we once we hit the uh, the summit and started coming back down though, like that valley that has those lakes and all that kind of, it's almost like you get so high that there's nothing up there but grass basically. Yep. And then once you start coming back down where the trees are again, dude, it was it was pretty amazing. That little valley on on the, uh, I don't know what side of the, I guess the Wyoming side of Beartooth. Okay. Because yep. you yeah. know, if you're coming from Red Lodge, Red Lodge Inn, and then you're yeah. heading into Wyoming, fucking beautiful, man. Oh yeah, I, we went and did that two years ago. I was enjoying all that time. It's like all the lakes too. You can see at the bottom of them, right? While you're riding by, yeah. It's like, dude, that's dope. I want to go get that dirty. Go <laughs> knock up some of that dirt. So with the heights, did that uh, million dollar highway get to you at all, or no? No, because that didn't. That never felt that high. Oh well, just the whole like where the road ended, white line six inches and sheer drop off like that. So let me let me so what scares scared me or gave me anxiety with uh with pike's peak was was it was three things it wasn't just the fact that like when all i saw was concrete and then the sky i didn't yeah. see any thing below it mm -hmm. was the fact that we're behind all these cars the wind's blowing out like a motherfucker i got a sail of a bike yeah you know which i don't i can't touch very well on my bike and uh, to begin with not that i thought i was gonna fall off Right. But it was just too much shit going on for my tiny brain to, you know, comprehend. So I just, you know, it's kind of like one of those things you start thinking about it and you're like, don't think about it. Why am I still thinking about it? And then you start. So, <sighs> like, if you would have had nobody in front of you, you probably yeah, would have been had fine. an issue. If you I just, wouldn't. You can roll at your own fucking pace. And yeah, because I would have I would have paid attention to the part of road that didn't, you know, freak me out. Yeah. Instead of looking at the sky. No. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hate that, like, sitting in traffic and then you're like – you know, whatever. On a, in, on a fucking 10% incline on a bike you can barely hold up yeah. behind a bus that's, like, whipping the ass end over the fucking mountain. I'm like, <laughs> I would way, like, I would have had a much worse time being in a car or a bus on that road. Yeah. But um, Million Dollar Highway, uh, it, it, you know, even on the part where there was an edge and there was, I could see the creek down below. Yeah, it was far enough where I'd go, mm, pretty sure I'll die, though. I mean, I'd definitely die. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, it didn't, I didn't feel like, like I was jumping off a 50, 60-story uh, building. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, it didn't, 
it didn't really freak me out that much. Um, Cause uh, also, like I said, the wind is what really fucks with me. You know what I mean? Cause like when you're up high and it's windy and you, you know what I mean? You're going slow. So the bike's less stable. Yeah. That's what I don't like that. Yeah. And that's what Pike's peak was for me. For sure. <laughs> but we had some fucking sweet roads on the way back, you know, cause yeah. I've never rode through Colorado. So between you know, the million, million dollar highway, whatever that road that we came in uh, for, what is it? Montrose? Montrose? The road that we came into Montrose was uh was really it it, it sucked up until the point we hit that Gunnison or something town yeah and then we went around that Sapanero Lake or some yeah, shit yeah that Reservoir Lake dude that was fucking awesome I I like those roads the most because yeah. you have these long sweepers so so it's still cornering but you're not like 15 mile an hour you know switchbacks you yeah. know what I'm saying and then not not to mention you have this long sweeper around this huge lake tucked in between these huge mountains it, it i just i love that dude and then i was just like looking at the people like enjoying the lake with their yeah their trucks drove right up to it you know yeah. and everything and i'm like wish we had more time because i just want to go and stop and yeah you know, maybe jump in the fucking water or something that, i i could have definitely stayed i could have camped right there 100 yeah. percent um but yeah i dig that more but you know one of the things that happened on that i mean probably the roads before would have been great too but with I seventy being shut down, the traffic on the roads that we were on oh, yeah. was ridiculous, man. Fucking cars everywhere. It's like, and it wouldn't be bad if they could just go the speed limit. Yeah, but it was like when they're like ten under and you're sitting there, you're like, just go at least fifty five. Yeah, I won't complain as much if you just go the speed <laughs> limit. Yeah, we, we got stuck behind like we're like forty mile per hours cars while we're on a fifty five sixty. Yeah, that shit sucks, man. And then people get mad because, you know, the way I, I ride really aggressively, like, like I try to, I'm used to, in the bike club, we used to just mob up on the back of cars and they would move, yep. right? If you saw a fucking 20 bikes pulling up, you know, you'd get out of the way most of the time, right? And so that mentality is what, instead of me trying to steer, you know, 15 bikes around, you know, in the oncoming traffic and then yep. around a car, you know, or, you know, whatever, then you just fucking, you know, make them feel intimidated so they'll fucking get out of the way. Right. You know? That was one thing that was crazy when I was in New Zealand. It's like you rolled up heavy on a car, like you're going faster down the road. Like people actually like pulled over and got out yeah. of your way. And then the person I was with out there, I was like, this would never happen in America. It happens in Texas, everyone. I mean, you, you saw what happened to us a couple of days ago. Yeah. A few times, but. But, you know, it was not like very often. Very consistent out yeah. there. Like, you came rolling up 10 mile an hour faster. Yeah. And people were like, oh, all right, pull off and then right past them. Everybody in America wants to be first. Yeah. Right. <laughs> not first, you're last. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> yeah, it was, a, it was a great trip, though, man. Like, um, it, it's weird being home. You know, I was telling you at lunch, man, like, you know, Sturgis is kind of like the New Year's for me. You know, it's like New Year's Eve is, is a party at Sturgis and New Year's Day is when you get home. And you're like, all right, now what? Right. You know? So are you gonna build a new bike for next year or what are we starting out as? What's the, the new trends that I seen, you know, that are getting my mind flowing? Yeah. Because I love it just going out there and just looking at bikes. Yeah. You yeah. know, like we could party all all day out there, but it like more or less sometimes I just like it when you're you know, you go there and you kind of just see what you can get off, you know, one this person's bike or that person's yeah. bike, you know, and I don't know. Just being a big bike show. You you went to the V Twin show, right? Yeah. What who do you? What bikes really stuck out to you? Do you, do you remember like some things that were pretty cool or anything or what? The big wheel baggers are sweet. They came. <laughs> there was like four of them. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, they I, there was a. Uh, I don't know. There was because I went to the FXR Dyna show the day before, so then there was a little bit of overlap with the FXRs and the Dynas between there. Um, Definitely like Insta having Kyle's bike. Uh, yeah. That was one of the first times, you know, I seen it in person completed. You know, I'd seen it when he was kind of still painting it yeah. and everything. Um, Roach's bike was definitely sick. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of in the performance bagger game. So, yeah, that's kind of where your eyes kind of lean towards. There's a dude with a, an Indian FTR that parked right next to me, but he had like, gold wheels on it you know it was like a ftr but it was like 
done up a little bit beyond yeah. what it was, I was like, hmm, that's pretty sweet, you know, because you don't really see that. But I wouldn't, you know, people know I don't like Indian, but I would like to see more of those FTRs getting customized. Right. It'd be nice to see what they would happen with like a little Donner Bro influence on them. Yeah. You know, or a little. There was some, one at the bike night last night. Somebody yeah, that was did. a stew. Yeah, Just that had, one his, it has like a, a fairing on it and everything. Yeah, he he's he's one of our close homies, but he used to be real deep with us back when we kind of first started doing the bike nights and the campouts and stuff. Okay. And then he started traveling for work and he's been doing all kinds of shit. So, but no, yeah, that was, I, I'd like to see more of those, but you, you would think with as much push as Indians had with all their, their, their bikes across the platforms, right. You would have seen more. Like I saw a lot of challengers on this trip, Yeah, you know, but comparative to how many road glides I saw, like not in night and day, it's almost right. like, yeah. How many skylines, you know, GTRs I've seen <laughs> on the road? Yeah. Well, like the FTR, it's not really a bike where they make it, so you can just throw bags on it and you yeah. know, do it on a cross country trip. So, you know, I you know, wouldn't really expect to see a terrible amount of FTRs. What about that cat? Did you see the dude that uh, rode his live wire from Florida to, to Sturgis? I didn't see the bike or anything. I think I kind of heard about it. We were, uh, I didn't meet him, but I kind of did at the Lexan booth. And then I, I guess he did a podcast with um, with uh, Jason, the speed metal built. I'm actually interested to hear that because they were telling me some stories about how that they were, he was only getting 70 miles per per charge on that thing, 70 miles. And then without the Tesla supercharging stations, it takes 10 hours to fucking charge that bike. That sounds terrible. Yeah. I'd get so frustrated, especially with the I heat. could be wrong with the 10 hours, yeah. but I want to say that he said it was 10 hours. Yeah. Even if it's 10 hours and you make it freaking 150 miles, you know, that yeah. would get old fast. Yeah. You know, like, all right, rode 150 miles today, and now I got to wait 10 hours for another charge. So might as well take a nap underneath this tree. I think with the supercharging stations, it's like 45 minutes, okay. which is crazy. Not, it's not bad. I mean, that if, for me and you, like we were stopping yet uh, the other day, like you know, we, the certain gas stations you get off, smoke a cigarette, we get some Red Bulls or something. But then, oh, most of the time, it was like, "You don't good? Even get off the bike? Yeah, oh, I'm good. Yeah, let's no. just pass some more." Yep. And so, uh, yeah, if you had to stop for 45 minutes each time, and you can only do 70 miles, is not it, like if let's it did even, 120. Even, yeah, 120. 120, I'd be better because then you're actually. You know, because about 120, you're ready to get the, get off the bike. Yeah. Things are going numb, you know, shit like that. So, what if I had, had to wait 45 minutes every? Oh. Well, kudos to the dude for doing it, though. Yeah. Like I say that, like he figured it out. 2,400 miles one way to Sturgis. Yeah. Um, and I guess he was talking to everybody about he he has an idea for doing the iron butt on the live wire, and he wants to be the first one to do it. But it's going to take like some fucking math. <laughs> Right. skills he said something about like he needs to like get somebody on like a road glide or something to draft the wind so he can ride behind it and get more mileage hmm. like i said he's getting nerdy about it so i'm kind of interested to see that now yeah. you know but then it's like the same thing i think about with like you know remote control cars back in the day like how much electric has came since the start of remote control cars yeah like, so if people actually start doing this stuff and you know, putting the stuff to the test, like how much better is it going to get, you know, over time? Well, that's know? also my, that's some, my counter argument to the thing. It is going to get substantially better, mm -hmm. but now you're stuck with a three-year-old electronic product that has the same value as a three-year-old iPhone now. Right. You know what I mean? So like this $30,000 bike, three years from now, when the new versions come out, if it's not something that they can add some of the new technology to the old bikes, mm -hmm. kind of like what Tesla does. Yep which I, I would think that they're going to do that. But you know what I mean? Like I'm still paying a seven year note on this $30,000 bike and I got in electronic world, 10 year old technology now. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's the scary part about that. I don't know. I'm curious to see where it goes just, you know, with electronics, all that shit, but ain't nothing ever going to be, you know, a nice V twin to so fucking rip combustion. it. <laughs> no, there's no rock songs about plugging your car on the wall, dude. <laughs> Oh, shit. It's all about gasoline and revving the engine, dude. Yeah, get the vibrations. What uh, what do you think about, like, uh, you, have you heard the rumors about, like, the Harleys coming out with a, um inverted front-end bagger with a monoshock? That'd be fun. Yeah. 
They should give me one. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> well, they're definitely not going to give us one. No. Not if you're on this podcast. No. But, um, <laughs> no, the, uh, I've I'm heard serious, about it. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> me too. I'll stop saying, I'll stop saying the bad words, the F words. Not the fuck word, but the other one. Um, the, I think that I mean it's kind of due for a frame upgrade, don't you yeah. think? It's been yeah, quite a while. It's about the same frame as you since oh nine, oh nine, and everything. Um, so that'd be cool to see like what they do with it. But I'd like to see how you know they do it with the styling, you know, because isn't the the Indian uh, mono shock in the rear? And then they have big old plastic panels that cover everything up. Or, yeah, I don't know. that that is I true. Just, that just, part I'm not a big fan of. Like, I don't mind the new soft tails, you know, Harleys, you know, great chassis and everything. Just as long as they keep the styling right on it. Yeah. You know, so you're going to do it because that's the big thing with the old Harleys is, you know, the styling's got to be right. You know, yeah. like, so you can do, if it makes it better, sweet, you know. That's, that's, that is a good one. I didn't even think about that damn nasty battery cover yeah. that they, or that, that under seat cover on the, on the Indians that makes it pretty hard to look at. Yeah. But the uh, just the, even the front end, because I'm not a huge fan of the inverted front end of Harleys, like on the baggers at least. Like yeah. I think that the uh, the way it looks, like and maybe it's just because I spent my whole life looking at the way a, heart, a bagger looks. Yeah. That when you see an inverted front end, it kind of feels off. Like it feels like even though those inverted uh, top forks or the uh, the outer tubes are yeah. beefy, yeah, like, it's still not as beefy as a cowbell. Right. Right. So you still have like this thinner kind of toothpick thing coming out of this big ass bike holding this front end together yeah and so that to me like the aesthetically uh, the aesthetics of that is what kind of throws me off yeah you know what i mean yeah because those cowbells are huge i don't even run them yeah i know you don't and it looks like <laughs> like your bike has chicken legs right <laughs> <laughs> 49 millimeter chicken legs yeah uh, it's it's just like right. i said i'm just the visual side of me is right. is what that that is but um yeah, so with the f forks, they, I feel like they would have to beefen them up even more. Right. Which, that's going to be heavy as shit on inverted front end for it to, to yeah. be that big. You know, hopefully, they don't make it too heavy and everything. But what, Victory and them, you know, they all had an inverted front end with some, like, mono blocks back in the day and shit. So it would be time for, like, Harley to kind of step it up with, you know, doing yeah. the inverted front end. But just hopefully they get their valving in it, like... I don't know, either something adjustable or something that's, like, easily changed out. Isn't all the stuff from the newer soft tails not adjustable? Like the... Uh, I, well, it's like... I, th I don't, don't quote me on this, but it's like, if you do stuff is with, like, the newer soft tails, you know, the inverted ones, it's, like, kind of a pain in the ass. Like, you know, special tools and all that stuff are needed to, like, get the bottoms off of the, you know, the inverted front yeah. end and everything. So it's, like, it's not that user-friendly, you yeah, know? Yeah. So. You know, I get it with, like, Harley. They're going to probably want to be like, hey, bring it to the dealer. But then you bring it to the dealer, and they go, well, we don't know what you're talking about with changing this with aftermarket parts. We only know how to do stock stuff. You yeah, know, and it's so. like, does Harley even offer, like, Screaming Eagle suspension? <laughs> they have the premium suspension, you know, like, that came in, like, the Dyna Lowrider S. And I had yeah. two Dyna Lowrider S's ride with me out in Sturgis. One of the dudes blew out his front suspension while we were there. So, you know, great premium stuff, you know. Yeah, like, and he's 220-pound yeah. dude, 210-pound dude. Like, not a huge, yeah. you know, that would actually blow out the suspension. I don't understand. But he's like, yeah, dude, I'm getting this clunk. And I'm like, go push on your front end. And he goes, push on it, and just bottoms right out and goes, dunk. And I'm like, yeah, your front end's just junk. He's like, that's the third time I've done this to this bike. Wow. I'm like, yeah. I was like. Third time, it might be, some, it might be installer error. Yeah, well, he had dealer fix it the first time installer and error, then, yeah. yeah and then they gave him parts the second time and then somebody else the third time i'm like i don't know i was like either put a cartridge in it or you know change it all even out to just like race tech stuff and yeah good springs i was like at this point whatever's in there get rid of it so, yeah and it's a diner right so he's got the 39 no 41? the 06 and up um 49. dinos are all 49 millimeter they're 49 yeah Who's 41 millimeter then? Uh, touring, oh. That's right, that's right. Or 13 and down touring. Okay. 14, when they went to the Rushmore, they went to a 49 millimeter front end. Okay, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't know, man. Like it, 
it's kind of sucks that we have to wait till February now to see all the new shit from Harley. Right. So, like I said before, back on that that thing of what I was saying earlier, like it's hard to fill space with events and news and 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 whatnot in the industry when nothing's taking place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because otherwise, then you know, like I, I've tried my best to kind of bring on interesting things that are going on. You know what I mean? Like our buddies and shit like that that are riding bikes and just talk about riding them. But like bike talk, it's kind of hard to kind of carry that very far right now right. because. You know, it's you've heard all this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like uh, one dude. Uh, I guess that's one thing I, I I don't really like about YouTube is uh is like the what people expect. Like they expect my podcast to be like your channel, right? And they expect it to be like everybody else's. Where like the Joe Rogan one, where it's like they have you know twelve producers and you know everything and people running the cameras. You know, with you, when you do, like, a camera episode, you're just sitting over there like, oh, I'll have the camera go to this guy. And you're trying to control it by still being yeah. yourself. Like, It's much different, you know, but, like, w what I'm kind of getting at is the fact that, like, a lot of people seem like they, they watch. Because I'm not guilty of this, but I'm aware of it. it. When I watch YouTube videos, if I watch, like, a Peter McKinnon guy that does all this, you know, vlogging and talks about video cameras and 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 uh, camera and photography who has a badass like pre presentation and then you go see another dude stuff that's not as nice right but the information's quality i still probably lean towards the other guys better because of the quality of the video right yeah but when it comes to like your videos which i admire because i wish i could even just do the simplistic n nature of what it is um it's so hard to do that stuff you know right. what i mean and uh I don't, I'm not a product review guy. I no. thought that, you know, when we first started the podcast, like, oh, I'm going to get some products and review it. I'm like, look, I, you know, like, I, I, I just don't, I, my review or my wants out of things are different than what I think the masses want. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to be like, well, this is great. Why? It looks badass. Right. How's it work? I don't know. It's fucking badass, though. And that's all. It, that's, didn't, it didn't break on it didn't my first break. ride. Yeah. You know, so then. So I'm just not really a product review place. I'm yeah, more of just there. a conversation about, you know, what's going on and and to try to bring more of a just a motorcycle's perspective of everything that's going on in the world, motorcycling or not. You know, not mm -hmm. that we're talking about politics on this this channel or anything, but you know, it's like, "Oh man, you'd be great if you uh, did a review on a uh, D&D exhaust." I'm like, "Man, I I don't have one and well, I'll just review it against this one other one that I have, you know? Yeah, it's like... You know, sometimes it's better to go off of, you know, like some other people that have a dyno sitting there and they yeah. can do this exhaust, that exhaust, that exhaust, and we'll put it with this cam, that cam, that cam, you yeah. know, because it's like some people ask me, they're like, oh, what's the... You know, I see this on with M8 forums all the time. They're like, what's the best sound in exhaust? I was like, when you put a cam in them. I yeah. was like, put a cam in M8, change the sound, whatever. Yeah. You know, it's like, True. well, this exhaust wasn't that loud. I'm like, put a cam in the bike. You know, they come with such a I tame cam from the factory that, you know, it's like once you put the cam in it, it's like, all right, now we get the sound out. Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, you know, Big Wheel Cody, Jones, uh, Kyle, like all their bikers, they're all running the same SNS cam. I forget which the, one it was. The 475. And their bikes sound good as fuck, dude. And I got that 480 cam in it. Mine sounds so tame. Like 124 <laughs> with the 480 cam in yeah. it. And I'm like, wow, theirs just has way more pop than mine. <laughs> but it's all the cam, you know. But yeah. the cam ended up working in the whole setup the way I ride. You know, it's like torque down low, pulls all the way to the top and everything. And yeah, know. that's what you want. Yeah. yeah, like I said, those, uh, you know, I'm just not a review guy, man. Right. Like, you know, even... I couldn't even, I don't even think I'm really capable of, of explaining to you, like, why I prefer the Simpson over that bell. You know what right. I mean? I mean, I can tell you why I prefer it, but those are things that they're not going to make, right. they're not going to be the same for you. You know what right. I mean? So uh, if I tell you that I build a performance bagger to look good first and perform second, most people would be pissed. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's what I do, bitch. And then it's like, <laughs> with mine, I'm like... You're like, what's the best thing you did? And I'm like, the suspension. I made it tall. But guess what? I don't think you could ride my bike or no. you'd want to ride my bike every day because you would be like absolute ballerina toes every time you stopped. Exactly. You know, and it's like, well, it gave me the ground clearance so that I can corner harder and do all that. But it's like, does it work for everybody? No. So. Yeah. 
So the, exactly, man. Like, so what's going to work for you? Same thing. It's not going to work for me all the time. But it's good to know that, like, you're taking it that far mm -hmm. to find out and push the limits of these bikes or at least these style of bikes and kind of uh, show the rest of people, like, yeah, if if, if you want to build an all-out track bike, like me, if I wanted to build a track bike that I was only taking the track, I wouldn't care about ground clearance that much because I'm not really worried about stopping at street lights with my wife on the back moving around and shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'd just be smashing miles and then you bring it in the pits and fucking there it is. Yeah. Have but, somebody there to catch you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that kickstand off safe weight. <laughs> but um you know, like uh you know, like I I'm a painter, you know. So my thing is how do I make this bike look like this, still work good and 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 perform better than factory, but keep it to where it's still appealing to the masses so that I can still sell what I do for a living. Right. You know, if 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 you make the bike too hard to look at, no matter what kind of paints on there, it's like, I mean, do you drive by and see like a fucking custom painted mailbox and you just go, oh shit, dude, you see this fucking mailbox? I need to get this painter's name, dude. Right. Like it's all about how the canvas that you're putting on and how that canvas in, in the, in the case of a Harley, how it's put together and, and how it works together, you right. know? And that's like same thing with like the mechanical side. You know, I'm very in the like mechanics yeah. of it, everything. I like my stuff to look good, but um, it's like some people go out there and they're like, "All right, you can make more power doing this." You know, I'm like, I know how to make you know more power. Like I can do you know head work and all that because I still run stock heads, but I have thirty thousand miles on my 124 exactly. of me being across country and fucking ripping some wheelies and fucking smashing corners yep. and holding it wide open at 115 for a full tank of fuel. And it treats me well, knock on wood, Yeah, you know, but freaking like, it's like trying to find that, that good balance of everything, yeah. you know? Cause like I can make it 150 horse and then I can have to put in a stronger clutch. Well, then the stronger clutch destroys the stock transmission and the stock transmission. Then you need to change that. And then they're like, where do you stop? Yeah, and it's like yeah. finally, like me and you were talking about this earlier. We're like, we're pretty content with like where our bikes are at. Yeah, you know, it's like, do you just keep throwing money at it? People are like, what's next? What's next? And you're like, fucking time to enjoy it. You yeah, know? yeah, it's a weird place to be too. Right, and it's you know, like maybe build something else. You know, yeah, maybe ramp up for when Harley gives me one of their new uh, motor shocks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Not gonna happen, but right. yeah, I don't. I I. Uh, it's a good point, man, because, you know, realistically, at least for the style of riding that we do, we want to be able to enjoy them at their fullest potential, but still get us from this time zone to that time zone for yeah, the most part, exactly. you know? You know, so, like, I factor that in with everything, you know, like, when I do it and, like, I know how to, you know, make shit crazy. I can do that. But then yeah. I'm like, all right, how crazy do I want to go, you know, which, you know, I feel like mine is, like, borderline already where you know you're gonna start having problems but yeah. i'm like this is farthest i want to go you know that that was one of the biggest reasons why I like you know because i figured at the end of this year is going to be new motor time for my bike yeah. you know um i didn't do any big boy all i did was a cam on my bike and i'm pretty content with the way it feels power wise but i don't like the idea of redoing a crank or something like that and then not and just going back to stock like oh it's dude to like i don't know i had you know my crank true and welded ran the stock rod, you know, like you can go all aftermarket, but I just had uh, somebody fix it, A1 cycles, and it was like 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. It was straightened, everything, and then I'll say it even alleviated a lot of my uh, primary noise, For you real? know, because like you normally measure run out on your cam side, not everybody runs it on the comp side, but my comp side was so out. So then the comp side being out, which then can over tighten your primary chain can mess with your clutch you know like yeah. all that stuff if you know when you think about it as a whole yeah. but nobody measures over there but i don't know i had to split my cases and you know do that and i just pretty much went back to stock but just welded you know straightened and welded <laughs> and i have 14k so far on it my primary still quiet as a mouse you know and i threw new lifters and a new cam in my motor and so i put it back together with the same cylinders and rings Man, I, I see. I feel like if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, then I need to. I, I want to feel a difference, and even though five hundred dollars is not that much right. money, right? But like, just the fact of doing it, like, I want to feel like when I put it back together, I'm like, fuck, that was worth it, right? You know what I mean? That's that's the great thing about anything you buy, especially performance products, is like 
is the feeling you get after the money. Like if you spend money on something and you don't get a feeling out of it, then that product doesn't touch your soul if right. you want to be kind of nerdy about it, you know? Yeah. But it's like you do a paint job on your bike, you know, whether it's like what you did with the just the flaked out turquoise or mine with all the stuff on it, that reward is once you take it out and everybody's like, fuck, that looks dope. I'm like, thank you. Yeah. That's worth it. That's a that's a coin. I'm, that, that's another dollar that paid off the cost of this paint job for me mentally. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? So. Yeah. What about what do you think about my pinstriping? Dude, I, I think it's, I, I like it, man. It's you. <laughs> it's you, dude. Uh, so, yeah, we were in Sturgis. Uh, buddy, Monty Roach, she always sets up booths at, like, the big places. Yeah. And then. Uh, I can't wait to have him on this podcast one day. Oh, yeah. Freaking. See, the problem is that him and Insta and Kyle are always together, and those are two different podcasts that I don't yeah. want to melt, melt together. They're both. Monty's pretty, story, though, yeah. from what I know some of it, it's fucking fascinating. And I can't, and the dude's only like 24, like. Yeah, 25, I think. Yeah. I said. But yeah, so like I had my bike at their booth and then Lucky Strike Designs there and Poland Designs. Mm -hmm. And then they're all like, dude, wheel your bike in. We'll just like triple team, you know, freaking uh, pinstripe in this thing. You know, it's all kind of scratched up down the side for yeah. whatever. So I was like, all right, whatever. You know, and we pull it up in there. And then I was like, yeah, I guess do whatever you want. And I walked away. Well, I got that Dixie Cup fuck Jerry logo yeah. on the side of my helmet. Next thing I know, I look over at Roach and he's pulling off a little thing of like uh, sponge for like sponge paint. And I'm like, I gotta walk away. I was like, I know where this is going. So I got some like Dixie cup lines on the side of my bike. And that, You know what's kind of cool about the performance bagger stuff and like your bike and the way it looks and, and the way all of our bikes are looking, Kyle's mine, even, you know, Daniel's at, at proper baggers and stuff. It's like, we're kind of, able to do whatever the fuck we want because right. we're not there's no norm that we have to kind of fit right. into there's no like box shit right. you know what i mean as opposed to like if you build a big wheel certain things are not going to be liked right you know what i mean or like sometimes like old school choppers yeah you know, it's like well you didn't do it like this so it's not right it's like we're out here and we're creating our own yeah you know stuff so style it's like and we can do whatever the fuck we want yeah and i think that you know like you know, I grew up in the era where everything had to match, yep. even though, like, I'm completely Power against Ranger. it these days. Yeah. I mean, dude, in the 90s growing up, like, you had to, you know, you had to match your shoelaces with your shirt collar. You know what I mean? Like, it was just yeah. kind of like the vibe that that was around. And um, then, you know, in the last 10 years, I mean, I've always kind of still been that way, you know, but I'll see, like, you know, these kids will come out and they'll have, like, cheetah print shoes with a fucking blue shirt and some purple pants and i'm just like that doesn't fucking match dude's got a little bit of swag though man i gotta give him some credit <laughs> you know what i mean there's almost like some appreciation in the fact that it doesn't work but it right. kind of works somehow yeah so absolutely. with that kind of mentality like trying to put that to a bike to where or you know a bike or something like that or maybe even just like a helmet or whatever to where it doesn't really match but it all fucking works right you know what i mean that's kind of the to me i think schultz was one of the best at that because I think his paint jobs, um, when I initially first started following the dude, it was like, that does not traditionally go with that color. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like when you think about color combinations, like this gold and that turquoise clashes, but then you do them together and it's like, fuck, that looks badass. Yep. You know what I mean? And he always, I think he's one of the most out of the box guys when it comes to, uh, putting together color combinations and shit like that on bikes. Yeah. Jeremy's the same way, man. Yeah. You know, Jeremy, the bike he did for my buddy, Jetty, like Jetty came to me to paint that bike. And he said, I wanted these colors. I said, you're gay, go away. <laughs> and then Jeremy fucking knocks it out of the fucking park. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, it's, it's, I, I admire that thing about a lot of different painters out there is their ability to look into colors the way they do. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Dude, even just watching like the artistic shit of it. So yeah. on like the back of my bike, you know, we, there was like, all right, they're going to do this. And then they were like, we're going to put a design on your back fender. You have no choice of it. We had like 12 people sitting around. Everybody wrote something down in a hat and, uh, put it in the hat and then some random person on the street was gonna you know draw it out of the hat i was like all right only stipulation on this the person that draws it out of the hat has to have a mullet so then they've been <laughs> searching around for like a half hour 40 yeah. minutes for a guy with a mullet one finally came up when i wasn't there and they wrote or wrote through all the the choices it was like viking lives matter um a jackalope wearing pit vipers and then the one that ended up winning was a dead bloated deer so then um uh, 
Jeremy's like, all right, I got this, you know, a portrait. And like, you know, a couple minutes later, he comes back with like one of those wax pencils, draws it up, like, you know, on the fender. And then, you know, right below it writes, nailed it. And then he just comes out there with some <laughs> pinstriping paint and just paints it. And I'm yeah. like, wow, it's like crazy. Just the difference of like artists, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like you get like, you know, crazy painters and you get guys like Jeremy that are just like, you know, super, you know, talented with like graphics and like, yeah. just like, we even had it, you know, we're hanging out one night and he's just sitting there just doodling. He'd be like, hey, draw this. And he'd like watch his brain rack for about 12 seconds and then he'd just draw it up. You yeah. know, and it's crazy watching that with, you know, artists. And He's got like a nice household because his, his old lady's like a very badass tattoo artist. So it's like, I feel like that it's such a creative household to live in to where they're constantly, they probably have like morning sketch sessions together. <laughs> they're all naked and shit, just drawing like, Hey, look at my fucking, <laughs> they have dry erase markers and just writing on the fridge and yeah. everything. And then just wipe it off at the end of the day and like start over tomorrow. That'd be a great Netflix show. Watching, <laughs> watching him and his old lady live together. That's gotta be tough with, with, with uh, Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 dude, it's, it's the best time. I, I feel like, being in this bike world as a, as a part of the industry um, is the best time, man, because I, I, I wasn't, when I got into it, man, I've said this a million times on the podcast and I apologize, but it just wasn't this opening to, to competitors. Right. You know what I mean? And um, being able to like truly be influenced or, you know, whatever you want to call that from other painters in many different aspects and be able to be like, man, dude, you killed that thing so badass and, and you know what I mean? I love the fact that it's open and no, and everybody's not all like super like, oh man, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna shout this dude out because my customers are gonna go to him now. You know, right. I, it's just the bet. I think it's the best time to be in this industry. Oh yeah. It's, even though it's still there, there's still that kind of vibe going on, but um, it's also changing a lot too to the point where, you know, and I, I feel like Jeremy can attest to this too, as as he's kind of embarking on his. His, um, you know, Lucky Strike is is uh, going full time custom paint shop, yep. as opposed to before he was kind of doing it more part time, which, to me, it's going to be exciting to see what this dude's doing when he's right. when when his day is filled with creativity this way rather than also fulfilling his nine to five. Yeah, you know. So, but yeah, it's awesome to be in this time right now doing this shit. Yeah, we definitely, you know, just all the companies and all the people out there, mm -hmm. you know, just seeing all the shit that's fucking, you know, coming out and, you know, whoever's doing what like right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, you know, even me, like I got my own little, you know, side thing that we've talked about before, just, you know, some side covers and stuff, but it was just something I made for my bike and then some people wanted it, but then it's like cool seeing other companies just come out and it's cool when you also know that they ride, you know, yeah, like yeah. this is like this guy and he's out there like Jeremy, you know, out smashing the Sturgis, you know, with a bunch of his buddies. And then he's being a painter in, in the industry. Like, yeah, you respect that that much more when they're doing it like that. So, yeah, that's a, uh, hold on, let me turn that off. Yeah, that's, that's kind of another part about it that I like is it seeing, you know, I think, I, I think I was talking to you about this. It's like, um, I feel like more people are starting to kind of like that have been all around painters of starting to kind of pick a scene or pick an industry to kind of focus on yep. and, um, and, and also dive in more as to, as to being a part of that culture. And I think that maybe, you know, I'm, I'm Je Jeremy's been doing it for a while, but you know, Poland has also had a bike for a while, but I feel like they're now starting to invest more time in the actual right. riding and hanging out and those other aspects of the bike world rather than just being a provider of the right. industry you know so yeah starting to come out and enjoy the scene and yeah and, you know and seeing the people that you're painting for you know some helmets that you've done and everything and yeah. seeing them out in the wild like dude being in sturgis with all those painted helmets that i did i've done over the last couple of years man it's it's super you know i think one of the dudes i love watching the most dude craig is the shit dude right i gotta give craig a podcast soon or <laughs> later because this dude fucking parties and rips and he he lives up his life every day Dude. that he can. It's like, you know, truck driver, but then it's like the moment he has off, it's like, I went here, did this, and then it was like, he flew up to Michigan you know, yeah. to grab his bike before Sturgis. And he was like on the lake in Florida, you know, past dark, and then he showed up, and I was picking him up from the airport by noon the next day. And I was like, damn, dude, like, don't waste a moment, do you? Dude, he, he partied with us, like, pretty hard the first 
pretty much the, every night in Sturgis, man, and it was fucking awesome, <laughs> man. You know, he's – we were talking about this with the boys. It's like – it's kind of hard. Like, our group, our us Texas dudes, we party pretty hard. And I would honestly – put us if there was like a ninja warrior for that i would say that we were, we're in the top 10 for sure in america for adults partying like and we're not doing coke off chicks asses and shit like that but you know we party right yeah <laughs> now i feel like we don't party that hard <laughs> <laughs> well it's like it was funny i was like with craig and everything you know because like when i get I get around a bad influence, like drinker, like, yeah. you know, I'm like shots and I'm like, fuck yeah. You know, next thing you know, you're shutting down the bar at two in the morning and everything. Me and Craig are like, yeah, we can't hang out without a doll's supervision. <laughs> Cause we just don't know when to call it yeah. quits to each other. Dude, that there's that video. I don't know who had it, but that video of him getting his boobs sucked at Sturgis, <laughs> this chick went in, she did a whole mouthful and he was laughing at first and then it felt good. His face <laughs> changed. <laughs> I missed that video. I think Kyle or uh, somebody has it. I have to get it, man. It's the funniest shit in the world. Oh fuck! But that that all these all these you know these different. I mean, like he's living proof of of the way to do this, right? right? You know, he's from Florida. He doesn't have much of a scene there, so he's investing his free time into Michigan and Texas and and Arkansas. And he goes out and hangs out with Big Will Cody and them. And he's Texas a lot. Yeah, he's got friends from Maine. Like he's just. He's doing it the right way. You know he's what I mean? not doing it when it's just convenient. Yeah. You know, it's like he's actually putting the effort out there and, like, trying to get it, like, you know, more out in the scene and everything. And, you know, like, oh, shit, I met you in Oklahoma, but you live in Texas. I'm driving through Texas. Like, Let's I'm going to come, it. you know, 30 miles out of my way to come hang out with you tonight. Is that cool? Yeah. You know, it's not like, oh, I'm going through Texas. Come up, meet up with me. You know, he's like, no, I'll come meet up with you if, you know. See, I'm the opposite. I'm like, fuck you. I just drove you, to Texas. I was like, you come to my place. <laughs> no, nah, but he's, he, yeah, he's, he, dude, he helped build some of this shop, man. Yeah. You know, he came out one night. Dude, this dude had like a fuck, he, he drives a truck all over the place, but somehow has every DeWalt tool known to man <laughs> for woodworking in his right. goddamn fucking truck. So he just shows up with his own shit, plugs it in the wall. He's like, anybody need, I got a screwdriver, I got a saw, I got, I was like tripping out. But we, we smashed some beers that night too. Yeah. No, we we definitely smashed some beers up in Michigan between my camp out because he ended up coming up to my camp out. And, yeah, you know, last year he, he came up last year, but he didn't have his bike. But motherfucker rolled in there with a semi at night. Dude, <laughs> looking. There, did you see the video of him doing donuts at the uh, at the Rebels <laughs> yeah. damn party? He's <laughs> oh, he's the best man. Oh yeah, tarpon, I, I, tarpon yeah. turbo. I wish he wouldn't have got rid of his mullet. He, uh, oh, he bitched out on it too too quickly. I think it was for work though, because like he's how like, he's a truck driver. Well, he's like contracted in. You can't have longer and shoulder length, you know, oh, hair. Okay. And like, oh, I don't know, his mullet was epic. It was going somewhere. Yeah, and I don't know. Uh, do you think the mullet's helping out with the ladies? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wish I had something funny to say with it, but I can't remember all my mullet jokes right now. Uh, it's all good. It just seems like such a wave across the country over the last like year and a half of the mullet game just going through the roof. But it's it's kind of dope. I mean, right. I don't. I think I could grow a pretty gnarly skull. It. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just nice little bald <laughs> look like Red Fox on your helmet, just yeah. put with a mullet on the side. But yeah, it's is wait is his name Red Fox? What's his no, name? No, Red Foreman. Red Foreman. That's right. Yeah. Red Fox is the from the. Uh, was it sunny sunny days or, eat, or fuck I don't know yeah I don't know I don't know what the fuck he's a black about. comedian I think okay <laughs> black lives matter um, yeah I mean it's a uh, it's kind of it's just dope seeing all this stuff kind of like blossom right basically and then being yeah like feeling like you're kind of in the beginnings part of it it's like you're not we're not trend chasing or anything like yeah. that we're like well we just kind of did what we wanted to do and then you know now we're getting more people and hopefully they respect the way that we've laid things out you know yeah just exactly. not being you know as far as like business side of it you're not you're not coming up being an asshole and trying to undercut everybody and being that you know or just friend side of it being that cool guy that shows up and yeah you know and, and then it's just fucking part of it, you know? Yeah, I like to, so I like to look at it like two different things. It's like the camp out stuff is definitely getting bigger. Ours, yours, and, you know, Craig's wanted to do one in Florida now. 
it's definitely going to get bigger and eventually if it, if all of ours keep getting bigger people are going to see that and they're going to try to put dollar signs on it yeah. right and i think that that's where it kind of loses the uh the the point right of it and then what i like to look at is that while i feel like me and you have both and, and, the, and the rest of the guys here in Dallas, we've laid a really great foundation that's, that has kind of swept across the country in some aspects. I like the fact that now, even though we, and you included, have kind of made a foundation for it, I mean, I like seeing the inspiration coming from other people like Craig coming in and the way he's making himself available, going to all these different places, even if it's in his truck, yep. and being a part of, of this little scene it seems to be growing every year, right? And um, you know, I I love that that is forming out of all this. You know, seeing right. the all your buddies that you've made up in the in the uh, PA area that yep. are starting to do shit and stuff like that's dope. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's really it's really our small little niche of this niche of motorcycle. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, just feeling like a big fish in a little pond right yeah. now you know but i love it you know it's it's great you know with all the people and matt and just all over the country and yep. you know it's like traveling around the country by myself right now but i really don't feel like i'm by myself because if something fucking happens you know like put it on you know instagram or be like i'm within 30 miles of this person's house that was like when i wrecked my bike um crystal city motor works you know 60 miles away you know in corny new york yeah we were gonna stop there on the way there called him up dude's like in my truck loading my trailer up right now come get your bike and then you know so it was like step one and just that but it was yeah. like you know he's going out and building like some performance baggers now and everything and like it was just cool just the community that we have you know and then i was like all right how much do i owe you he's like dude don't worry about it like yeah. you have bigger for, or bigger problems i'm like exactly. awesome you know so it's like if you're gonna take and like do that make sure you give back to people yeah. you know the best you can any way you can you know it's either between knowledge or helping them turn a wrench and you know do that it's like, man it's you know the i think that like what what's going on with all the camp outs with all the riding all the different events it's kind of like you know you're putting stuff you're putting food on the table i'm putting food on the table craig's now putting food on the table daniel's been putting food on the table from proper baggers and you know if we all keep providing and pushing and, and making this table filled with food we all get to eat good man right. and and the thing is that like uh, there's opportunities for everybody to come out and do all these things and there's right. plenty of different opportunities for them to get out and make friends and that's basically what the 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 concept of the of the camp out's always been right yeah. is yeah. to We're be not. vulnerable come out and meet new people and next thing you know now you got you know you're from michigan you come to dallas and now you have friends from all these different parts of the uh of the southwest or, or south yeah. i don't know we, yeah what we are <laughs> South I think Central. we're south. <laughs> yeah, you can just be the south. Yeah, I think we're the south, even though like New Mexico, southwest, and yeah. then El Paso's early, like halfway in New Mexico. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. But, you know, like I said, that the, there's this big opportunity for everybody. If they're putting in or the effort, they get a lot out of it. You know, Craig, I feel like on the outside looking in, is getting a lot out of it. Yep. Because he's putting a lot into it. Oh, you absolutely. know what I'm saying? And it's not like we don't really have the the mentality that we want to like make money off these yeah. camp outs and shit because that's not what what it's about it's not because it's like even if i had all the money like this is the shit i want to do but it's like yeah this is what i would buy if i had to buy it with the money you know yeah. so it's like if we can keep it simple and good and just good people you know everybody comes out you take care of your shit when you're there and you bring you know a lot of food to the table type of thing yeah like it's fucking worth it and it's fun ass time like i had it with my camp out like people drive a thousand miles i'm like i don't care if you stay there all three days or if you show up one day and then you enjoy your your ride there and your ride home because yeah. now you're starting to understand like the riding is what that i want you to yeah. like come out and do you know it's not like need you there and whatever it's like if you're there for one day i'm like fuck yeah great to meet you great yeah. party hope you're not too hung over on your ride home tomorrow yeah. <laughs> you know that's that's what's fun about it man like or that's what i like about it too is seeing people uh you know go out of their comfort zone try something new it i, I will say though like this year you know i i tried to uh do the just take pictures the whole time um which not that i was 
I didn't really get drunk the entire time, which was probably a good thing because I think the year before we got fucked up and went on like Instagram Live and was oh, like, yeah. if you don't have a proper bagger sticker on your bike, then fuck you and <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that was. <laughs> <laughs> so it's probably a good thing I didn't get drunk, but you know, some people would like even our camp out still showed up, but they went and camped on the other side of the place, right? Exactly. So they wasn't really. You know, you don't really have to try hard. You just got to put yourself in the mix. Right. And, um, it, you know, I want people to, you know, kind of more or less get what you got out of it when, you know, you showed up. Or Big Will Cody is the best example. Okay. He shows up on a fucking Big Will Bagger. The complete oddball of the situation, now he's one of our closest friends. Right. You know what I mean? And it's all because. Happy birthday, Big Cody. Yeah, Big Will. <laughs> But it's all because he put in the effort and he he, he was the vulnerable one in the situation. Right. And, um, you know, and once, I mean, pretty much, unless you're just a complete dick, asshole kind of guy, you're pretty much going to get along with everybody and everybody's going to be cool with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, just don't put on cheetah pants or anything. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. But, you know, like the, the thing that does scare, it doesn't scare me, but I, I do wonder is it you know obviously we want the camp house to grow because it reaches more people but at what point does it get to where like okay this is now it's too big yeah. you know now there's too many people here now there's right. you know like now it feels like a rally right <laughs> you know what i mean and that, that's what i kind of get scared of because i like the the smaller stuff yeah. and everything but i always like meeting new people so then see i didn't feel like, like i got to meet a lot of new people on yeah. this last one you know there was we had our biggest turnout yet but i felt like and maybe it was because I was doing something. I was doing the pictures of walking around and not talking to as many people. Right. But I just never really felt like I sat around a fire and talked to anybody. You yeah. know, I don't know. So, I don't know. Yeah, because it's like first couple of your campouts, I went, you know, just by myself. So like I was forced to just meet new people. Yeah, you know, it was like well, my first one I went by myself. And then punches came with the second one. Missed that dude. Yeah, he was fun. Punches buy a new bike. Hell yeah, dude. But uh, yeah, so it's like you're forced to meet new people, but it that's what the experience is about, you know. Next thing you know, like you can go, like I don't care, you can show up my camp out and go camp up by everybody else. I'm not gonna do that, but you're gonna miss out on stuff, you know. Yeah. It's when you wake up in the morning and freaking some dude's like getting changed outside because he can't change in that. You see his bare ass, and you're just sitting there laughing and shit. <laughs> you're not gonna get that when you're way up yeah. front, away from the party, you know. Or at three in the morning when someone's. <laughs> <laughs> throwing up <laughs> <laughs> fucking buddy joe kraus he came to the camp out he had his tent got all wasted couldn't like figure out how to get in his tent fell asleep on top of it somebody <laughs> took a picture finally like people like get him off it open his tent up get in the tent well he had a puke couldn't figure out how to get out of the tent so he <laughs> took, pulled out his knife cut the top of the tent open wow. and everything and then ended up going out of it it was like how i go to bed versus how i wake up <laughs> but yeah, was like, Joe's a good dude, man. yeah if he wasn't in like the fucking area about all the other tenors we might not have seen the stupid shenanigans you know that's the, see you know uh matt uh you know matt so this year he got the treehouse at, at uh and he said like he felt disconnected right from everything it's like it was even in sturgis so like i got a deal on a, a hotel in deadwood i'm like this would be sweet like Ho deadwood's popping cool little town kind of just wish i would have stayed in a tent like down yeah. days end campground with you guys or you know wherever you know it's just like it was convenient you know but I just, yeah, I felt disconnected this year. So that's why, like, kind of my Sturgis trip ended up being a little extended. Yeah, like you feel was, like you need some more like interaction. I was, like, I got done with, you know, Sturgis, and I was like, I need to, um, like, go ride more. I was like, I need to go see more people or just mm -hmm. do something. I just, I don't know. I guess I think I the first time I saw you was at that Boar's Nest. Like, you yeah. pulled up with uh, yeah. Danny, Danny D. No, it, he pulled up later on. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay. So. I get him and not them mixed up as people, but their names. Yep. Danny so, D from NYC. And Danny G from, from I guess he, he's from all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that. Um, you need that motherfucker on the podcast. Dude, I, I want to bad, man. Like, uh, you know, I need to just nut up and do this. I need to do that trip up north uh, yeah. to you guys. Um, I don't know why I just, I don't know if, it, even though it's probably not as spread out as I'm thinking it is, but it's like, it's so hard if i went to if i went to 
let's just say Detroit, right? And then came home and didn't go through Milwaukee, even though it's on the other side of the lake, Milwaukee, Chicago, and all that, I would be like, man, I just wasted this. I should have took an extra couple of days, made the loop, did podcasts out here. I'd like to go see the museum one day if it's right. open. Um, do these type of things to try to catch as many of these podcasts and stuff from up there, but I don't know, maybe it'll happen this year. When's the right. snow really come down and it's hard to get around? When yeah. does that start? Um, oh, it depends. Like, you know, you get into, you know, October, you're really gambling, you know, mm. if you're going to wake up, if there's going to be, like, it's not. Where's the line where it's, like, always happening? So, like, if you're, you're, like, middle of a. Uh, yeah, so, like, normally it probably doesn't snow until, like, November where I live. You okay. know, and Detroit's even a little bit less. You know, it's just we get a lot of lake effect. Like, it comes over Lake Michigan, and then we'll get it a little inland, mm -hmm. you know. But it'd be, like, a little bit cooler. But if you did it in, like, October at the latest, like, early October, I think you'd still be fine. Yeah. As long as you didn't go, like, up and around. No, I would probably just. Like, if you did, like, Detroit, other Detroit than, and, you know, maybe other Chicago. Other than, uh, than Clem's up there, like, I don't really know who else to talk to in that area of, of like, Michigan. If well, then you got Chicago. It's not too far. With, yeah, I figured Chicago, you, know, you can dip deck, dip yeah. around and hit that. And then on the way back, you know, hit HPI, take the keys out of your bike this time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not riding. I'm going to drive up there. <laughs> the the uh, Sometimes, like, riding and doing the podcast work out well, um, but sometimes it's uh, the road – takes a lot out of you and yeah. it's hard to be mentally there that's kind of why i didn't want to you know I, I had a couple opportunities to do podcasts in sturgis but you know i got my wife there i got all my friends there everybody's yeah. doing this and then you know it's just it's just really hard to kind of do podcasts like last year when it was just me and you it was easier because right. it was just like us yeah like no other like we went and i had no responsibility for anybody else's enjoyment right. yeah. in Sturgis. Yeah, know? that was like even with, you know, the whole YouTube thing. Like I did a lot of like writing footage and, you know, sneak some footage, but I didn't do a lot of like my commentary that I put into it. You know, yeah. we have like the, the video and you talk and just because it's weird, like I had people I knew around me. So I'm like, I don't want to like act like this person. Like, you know, this is my whole Yeah, thing. and even like, though you don't, you don't really act different on your page, but I, I still feel, I understand what you're saying. Like yeah. when you're doing the YouTube thing, you do feel like you're being different right you know it's like just pulling over to gas station and being like oh we're in you know durango colorado you know and it's like it's weird to just to, to nut up and do that sometimes yeah. you know especially when you have that many people around when i'm by myself i'm like i don't care if fucking joe over there sees me like me doing my thing because he doesn't know who the hell i am but when i got a bunch of my buddies around i'm like all right i don't want to act like a retard or anything <laughs> but i get it man it's tough it's uh but yeah, like uh, I, I, I need to. This is like I said. This year's been tough, man. But you know, just jumping in the car, throwing like my nicer equipment in there to get better quality sound is kind of the main thing. Because those little mics that we use on the helmets and shit, right. it's just it's tough. Not the man. Same. It's not the same. And and uh, you know, I feel like I'm never in the conversation that well because I'm constantly fucking with the dials because right. you know you never know because. With these mics and these boom stands, we can move back and forth, and it all sounds good. But yep. if if like it's on the helmet stand down here, and then I sit back for a minute and talk, and I, I'm about to say like, no, 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 you got to do this. Yeah, and it changes so much of the audio quality. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's even like you know, I know you've done a couple like Skype ones and everything, yeah. and it's you just don't get the same feel, you know. So the Skype ones. Like, I did the Ride Boundless one with those dudes from that podcast, and that was awesome because they both had the same setup as I did. Okay. So I was able to send that guy who – he has a producer. I don't. Yeah. So I was able to send his producer my side of the video or of the, of the podcast, and he had his side. So they used my audio from my side and his audio from his side. That way they cut out the middle, which okay. was the Skype. Yeah, because like when I did one with you on Skype, it was like as soon as I started talking, I couldn't hear what you said. Yeah, it cuts and off. So then I'm like, you know, like you just be like, do, 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 do. Yeah, but. it's, it's a, you know, when all this like COVID shit first hit, I mean, it was just the only other option we had to bring able to bring con yeah. to be able to bring content on. Yeah, and everybody then, Instagram live in and whatever. yeah, that that got weird quick though, didn't it? Yeah, you know, like I mean, we went live a bunch, but you know, with everybody trying to do the uh, the uh, live 
almost like it was almost like, hey, this is my audition to see if I want to do podcasts. Right. You know, so you had like V Twin Visionary doing that shit, and then you had Tucker Speed doing that stuff. Then you had not that there's anything wrong with it, but it's just so many people yeah, doing it. It was just all the time it'd yeah. pop up and you're like, all right, you'd watch a little bit, but I just, I couldn't really get into it. I, you know, I, I did like two, I think me and Insta having Kyle did one accidentally. Yeah. Like I was just going to do one alone and then he popped in. So I was like, Hey, fuck it. Good time. <laughs> right. And then, uh, and then I did the one with Danny G and, uh, I mean, cool, but it's different when you're doing this right, right here and you don't have like some kind of like comments going down the screen like if i was we were sitting here having this conversation and that tv was on and it was like all the people that are listening yeah you know like making their comments it kind of throws you off the mix yeah. of what's going on that's why when we would do the live stream like i would never look at what's going on in there because it can sometimes it can help the conversation or right. sometimes it can like throw you off so yeah because i remember like way back in the day i think you and jesse went and did like a live one before and actually like went through some comments which it wouldn't be it'd be cool every once yeah. in a while just get like a little you know user interface you know to it but you know i see with like if we're trying to do this whole podcast and having people you know constantly doing questions like, everybody's like hi Hey, yeah. hey, love the podcast. You actually have a good question and it just gets buried, you know, yeah, and something yeah. like that. So, but be so, cool to do, you know, maybe like a little live session or, you know, some pre-done questions and, you know, talk. I feel, I feel like I haven't had my brother on here in quite a while. I feel like I need to let him come on and just talk shit to me <laughs> for, like, for like a good month or so, just so you can catch up with all the shit talking I've done to him. Oh, absolutely. Everybody got to know I love my brother. He's just, yeah. you know, he's my brother. So. Yeah. I gotta fuck with him. You gotta, you gotta bring Jesse that. back. I gotta polish that turd, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's a. Uh, I, I mean, seen him last night. You did. He, yeah, he came he to the bike. bike did he was on his bike. Did he uh, paint? no. I'm, I think yeah. he, didn't he try to repaint his bike while yeah. you were gone. Yeah, a little asshole. <laughs> brother leaves the shop. Little brother comes and takes it over. Rape and pillage my materials and shit. <laughs> <laughs> now he, uh, like I said, you know what the. I guess what's starting to kind of bother me is that like he he's wanting to paint more, like custom paint more, and I'm like, yo, dude, why didn't you want to do this two years ago at the shop when you had all this at your at your fingertips? Right. You know what I mean? Like, I guess well, yeah. I'm just that bad of a boss. Yeah. If that makes sense. I don't know. Sometimes there's opportunities that slap you right in the face and the best moment, but you weren't ready for it in your life. So then, you know, that and like people go, well, why didn't you do it here? And you're like, well, I don't know, but I want to do it now. Yeah. So it's kind of hard because I've had plenty of those opportunities, you know, where things what, were easy. And weren't you like doing electrician stuff before you ended up quitting? Uh, yeah, electrical. And then I was like an electrical maintenance guy and then got laid off during all this COVID stuff and haven't been back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Then I got in the deer accident. So what's the, uh, you know, we've been talking. What is, are you allowed to say, like, where you're thinking about moving? I don't really fucking know. So like, what's, what's. Montrose looked pretty cool. Dude, Montrose looked pretty like, good. We were rolling into there, and I was like, I don't know. This seems like a decent little town, a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I was thinking, I was like, I was thinking about getting a Sprinter van that could fit the bike in the back and mm -hmm. trying to half, like, I have a, I live a very minimalistic lifestyle as it is. Mm -hmm. Like, I lived in a camper for two and a half years. Like, I, I bought a fifth wheel toy hauler. So, like, I don't have a lot of excess stuff. Yeah. Like, so if I had room for clothes, you know, welder, generator, you know, welder. <laughs> like, whatever. Well, I still got the little side business yeah. and everything. So, like, had that, you know, in the back of the van, and I can pull the bike out if I get, like, somewhere cool and, you know, hang out camp spots for a while and, I don't know, maybe just figure out where I want to move to and actually set some roots. Like, Michigan's not bad, but I think with just how I am, I need uh, – I need a getaway for a while, you know, not saying I'd never go back to Michigan if I did leave. Do you feel like you need, like, a, a longer riding season? Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're trying to do uh, YouTube about motorcycles, you know. Like, <laughs> you got <laughs> yeah, to be, be in a place where it doesn't snow every time. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I can only back. rebuild my bike so many times, yeah. you know. That's a good but, point. But I don't know, just maybe just try some other things out, you know, because that's one thing I love about traveling as it is, is just seeing how much different the world is. Yeah. You know, like you get the people that that don't understand how the world is. They don't leave their hometown. Yeah. You know, it's like even us on this trip, just 
going through Colorado and seeing how New Mexico is and, you know, seeing up in Wyoming and then seeing how it's in, like, you just get, like, eye-openers. And it's even with walking in a gas station, what yeah. would change your eyes, you know? So I don't know where I'd want to go if I didn't move, but. Yeah, that's uh, a I tough one. Yeah, I'm, I'd want to try something out. You know, maybe come down to Texas, you know, during the winter months and figure it out. Yeah, I haven't really been very far east or definitely northeast yet, so I don't really, I don't know. Like I said, you know, we were talking about it before. It's like I definitely want to say that at some point in my life I got out of my hometown. Yeah. Right, and I'm technically not now. So it's like there's this part of me that really wants to just see what what it's like to wake up every day in in a different town with a different vibe uh, and shit like that. Um, Just for the experience. Yeah, just for the experience and and just, you know, like my wife, like I envy that about her. Like she grew up in L.A. area, then moved to Oklahoma, of of all places, and then lived in, you know, Hollywood, Florida for, uh, you know, a while and then now lives here. Yeah. Like – you know, like, don't get me wrong, like, it's got to be tough to, like, go into these different towns and, and you know, make a life. You know, it's 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 pretty easy to have friends, right, on Instagram yeah. and shit, but, you know, like, everybody wants to be your boy when you're cr- cr- cruising through town, but what if you move to town? Right. Are they still down to party and down to ride like they are when you occasionally come by? Yeah. So it's kind of a, th- that kind of question gets kind of thrown in the air, because right now I have that. Right. I have a solid group of dudes that are down to put miles on the bikes and you know put the boys before the girls kind of <laughs> yeah but man it like we both pulled into montrose we're like fuck man this town's kind of clean and it's 60 miles from that fucking lake that we just went through and 60 miles from the million dollar highway and it's 850 miles to to la and then and it was you know, like 650 to sturgis. 650 to sturgis like damn this might be a good spot yeah. you know but still you know snow right Colorado. Yeah, they, we're sitting in Chili's asking the lady, like, all right, what's the winter weather like around here? Yeah. Like, we're just trying to scope it out for each other and everything. Man, I don't know, man. Like, I, 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 I think that, like, my choices of where I would want to move once I'm able to is part of me wants to say, part of me wants to live in California just to say that I did it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know that it's probably the worst place to live right now with everything that's going on, but you know th- there's like a i guess the part of me that that like if you're from texas then you look at california like that's way too expensive it's it's crazy it's this this and this but i look at it like well there's people already living there yeah so if they can do it i can do it so i got I, to me i want to figure out how to do that and and be able to afford to live there and pay taxes and do that shit because i feel like if you can do that there then you could do it anywhere right you know what i mean Everywhere is easier than it's supposed to be, except for New York, I guess. Yeah, but then there's that part of me that wants to have like that spot, just kind of in the hills somewhere, like kind of where Mark is, but a little bit further out, so yep. that you're kind of like not in the city at all. Mm-hmm. But fuck, man, I like social activities. Right, you know that's the other part. <laughs> even yeah. even being here all the time and now moving to the side of town, like the homies that used to party, we were talking about. It. Like when I lived downtown. I was in the party all the time. Like yep. the bars were across the street. Yep. And now it's out here, so I have to go to that place now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So that part's different. But yeah, it's definitely a little bit different with that as far as like, because you're down there, mm-hmm. you know, then it's like you're the life of the party. So then it's like every time somebody else comes down there, it's like, oh, are you coming by? It's just across the street. And you're like, all right, I guess, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then, it's a two-edged sword on that one, yeah. you know, because I've lived both parts of that, you know, where it's like you're at the place that's the party or, you know, you're really far away, so then you have to put in the effort to it. And I don't know. They both have their pros and cons. Yeah. Are you thinking about trying to make this decision before the end of the year or what? Um, I don't know. I just I'm a I'm a play it by ear type guy, so yeah. If like a, a sweet sprinter van or something falls in my lap type thing, then Well I know Mark has uh got a nice big shop now with a lot of fabrication equipment that you're about yeah. to go see. Yeah. So and maybe he has an extra room you could rent. I, I probably have to like tell him I'm going down there. He doesn't even know yet? Oh I, he just I I said something and then he's like, You in Dallas? And I'm like, Oh, I'm in Fort Worth right now. I was I think I might come down and see you. So That's I haven't cool. checked my messages since we've you probably don't have so yeah. no he's uh dude that new shop he's got is, is is looking pretty good and yeah. uh 
Yeah, I mean, do we up until uh, like a couple of weeks ago I went and saw him? I hadn't seen him since you and him were here. Yeah. So because like I talked to him, I talked to him quite a bit, but yeah, I haven't seen him since January. I yeah, know. I don't even Just, know what I'm gonna do about January now. Yeah, you know, because um, we we usually would throw our our anniversary party, um, which. To be clear with everybody, the reason I do that is the same reason for the camp out. Like it's, to me, it's a way of bringing everybody together. Yep. Especially in the winter time when there's not a lot going on, so it's like, hey, what fuck else are you doing? Right. You know what I mean? You want to go pay forty dollars to go do a New Year's party and have to pay ten dollar drinks, or you want to save that money and come fucking to Dallas and party with some bikers? You know what yep. I'm saying? But last year I got in trouble. You know, we built this shop thing to party out of, and now I can't party out of it because my neighbors. Uh, don't like the uh, noise and all the burnouts that end up taking place when bikers drink. Oops. So, <laughs> not the one that Rock did in the into the fucking wall here. That one didn't hurt at the shop, but the big party we had here, uh, being here till two in the morning with the music going and people right. talking, uh, it, you don't realize how loud talking is until there's all the other sounds are gone. Right. You know what I mean? So. Um, it's kind of like that pissed them off. And then we had this uh, thing called the hood ride and we all came back here and partied afterwards. So it was middle of the day, but then, you know, this one dude was doing wheelies in the parking lot. This one dude did a burnout in the parking lot. And so the neighbors around it saw all the bikes and heard them and just all the shit going on. So they're like thinking that we're just hoodlums and shit like that. So now my landlord's like, Hey man, like can't have any parties here. Like you're a custom paint shop, you know, or a paint shop. This is not your business, blah, blah, blah. And I, kind of had an argument with them for a minute and told them, I was like, look, man, I do podcasts out of here. And sometimes those happen until three in the morning. Yeah. If I leave here at three in the morning on my bike, I'm not trying to cause issues. So can't really have a uh, anniversary party here at the shop. Not, not like an extended one, like maybe like the close homies kind of thing. Right. So not quite what we did last year. Not yet. Not quite that. So then the other alternative was like, is IMS taking place now? You know what I mean? Fucking COVID shit. It's just like you can't even do any plans now because you're yeah. like, well, is it going to get canceled and everything? So with it, with that being the case, like I thought, well, what if uh, what if we just host like a bike show or a bike thing like that here? Yeah. That's something small, but it's something to do so that people have a reason to come here. Yeah. And I figured like I could probably get strokers to let us, you know, do it at, at his place or something like that. Um, if if not his place, there's plenty of people that would love to have uh, money from yeah. patrons coming in and buying beer and mm -hmm. hanging out. So I don't know. I want to do something so that we can continue to do that because I think it's been um, it's been a good thing to like fun. You know right. what I mean? So yeah, get some some people out. You know, whatever. Especially in your winter months around here, I'm I'm loving the ride. And when I like come down here, I'm like I don't care. It's like 50 degrees. I'm like because it's 10 degrees at home. Yeah, and everybody's like. Ugh. <laughs> but you know it's still like you know a nice little midwinter break and at least for me so yeah i think it's you know like i said it's been it, the last so we've been doing like the new year's thing since uh 2016 20 the end of 2016 so 2017 yeah um and it's just kind of progressed from like a a a, a, a a a new year's day ride to a new year's night party day ride kind of thing going on and and it's not, like I said, it's not so much that I'm trying to, uh, you know, party for the anniversary of the shop and the podcast. It's more right. just you know, getting together with doing stuff, friends, man. you know, it's like just trying to put together some event and not having it be like so wild or, you know, or it's like a big cover charge or anything. It's yeah, like, just yeah. show the fuck up. You know, it's like, that's all I'm looking for is I you mean, just dude, to last, just this, show up. This last year was pretty fucking crazy. Like in this little shop, you know. You and all the home, all the homies, Mark, all, every, all the Dallas cats. But then we have Curtis Hoffman sitting outside. Taylor Schultz comes out. Like, right. I was like, fuck, man, I got some A-list <laughs> celebrities coming to this bitch. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, you know, it's just fucking dope. Like, that's right. what it should be. You know, and it's easy to do that with IMS going on because a lot of people are coming to town right. for IMS anyway. And so this is kind of like the underlying event that's kind of funner than the actual IMS show. Yeah. But at least if, you know, for you nerds out there, they're like, oh, well, I need a fucking event to go to. Well, there's right. your IMS. Yep. Go pay $15 a person to get in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And walk it in 10 minutes and be right. done with it. But, yeah, it's definitely cool when you have, like, cool people like that that show up and everything. So 
Yeah, it was, it was fun, man. You know, dude, I, I came in here the next day afterwards. There was, like, people sleeping in here. <laughs> like, I just, I got so fucked up that I was like, man, I don't care. Like, y'all yeah. just take care of my shop. Don't burn it down. I just <laughs> came here the next day. There was, like, 10 or 15 people crashed out in the shop. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. They were all, they started, they fell asleep outside around the fire and then worked their way into the into the studio because <laughs> it was the inner room of the inner shop. You know yeah. what I mean? So, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to pull something off. Um figure it out yeah hopefully i think the like i said you, you know part of me feels like as soon as uh the election's over then all this shit's gonna go away or it's gonna go away very slowly but indefinitely right. you know what i mean and then the other part of me feels like it's gonna get worse right so i don't know hopefully we can still be bikers next year yeah without having to lick a stick or some shit to be approved to go ride <laughs> so all right. Yeah. We're call good. It. Yeah. 219. Let's yeah. do it. All right. Tell them where to uh, check out your YouTube channel. Um, YouTube channel, S Chamberlain, C H A M B E R L I N, 5150. Instagram, same thing. Um, yeah. Check That's, it out. Yeah. Check I don't it out. Know. It's just some performance bagger shit and some builds and some trips and shenanigans yeah tons of shenan i love your i love your intro steve yeah you got to see the intro of the video so <laughs> if you haven't seen the intro at least give that a shot so. we haven't really seen shenanigans steve that much yet have we except for the wheelies yeah the wheelies you at hbi yeah. drunk was that you drunk doing wheelies maybe maybe <laughs> all right cool all right guys thank you that was a good time and i hope you guys enjoyed it uh thank you steve for stopping through on your uh smash across the country riding uh if you guys don't mind check out our sponsors dream rides john on instagram and team dream rides.com paint huffer metal flake on instagram and paint huffer.com fast life 20 10 percent off at checkout thunder max efi on instagram and shop tmax.com fast life at checkout saves you 10 percent off lexan moto on instagram and lexan moto.com and fast life saves you 15 percent off at checkout and Simpson Motorcycle Helmets on Instagram and put a dot .com on that and you're in the right spot. Thank you guys and thank you sponsors. Uh, if you guys can, check them out. They are rad individuals, products, and people and um, wouldn't be here doing too much without them. I want to thank you Patreon supporters for supporting this podcast even through the drought uh, that we've been facing with content. But anyway, we're coming back strong and finishing, finishing this year off great so thank you guys and we'll catch you back on the next podcast peace